Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessa, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy freaking Saturday. It's that day of the week, down to the hour, minute, and second, and we turn our clock back to European time to enjoy the evening with our friends from across the big pond as we come together to talk about those things that the government refuses to acknowledge, to talk about those things, yes, from science fiction, more importantly, to talk about those things we see on the X-Files many times, or importantly, if you go outside in the evening sometimes, it's those things you can see out in your backyard or over your house. What are we talking about? We're talking about UFOs. Yes, we. while we know there's a whole bunch of new fancy words of unidentified anomalous phenomena or unidentified undersea uh, aerial phenomena, Let's push that aside and leave that to the lawyers because we know the government is fighting with Congress for bringing out the truth because they've had 75 years to wage their war against the aliens. That's right. To go ahead and pull their technology out of their dying hands. How do we know this? All the information we see, it's all military. It's all about war. Nothing's about a peace mission. Nothing's about a scientific exploration. It's about the technology, what they do and what they're going to have to do to get the technology to figure out who they are potentially why they're here if they even care because our government is focused on one thing the craft the craft the craft it's the biggest psyop in the world we're dealing with right now and it's a message we have to break through we have to start talking about what's inside the craft more importantly why are they here what are they doing is is the thing that most people ask and tonight we've got a great movie producer uh, director here this evening mr michael mazzola who's done a bunch of instrumental pieces and we're going to talk about how we can get these bozos to come out with the truth because it's going to take all of us not just the people in the ufo community it's going to take everybody from around the world to come together on that note i want to say welcome to disclosure tonight good evening everybody good morning or good afternoon depending on where you're at as i usually say we've got a great guest here today before i uh without any introductions to the audience and everything i want to introduce our guest if we can do that right now let me go ahead and find him ah there he is mr michael mazzola how you doing michael I'm great. How are you, Thomas? Doing great, doing great. It's one of those days where you just look at everything, trying to get it together. You know, nothing goes right. <laughs> if a computer can yeah. crash or the dog can make a mess, it's going to happen before the show today. Great to have you around. Man, you have been around for a while. You've been in this, and you've uh, created a bunch of great movies. I've got my friend Greg O'Brien here to uh, be part. Uh oh we lost Greg. <laughs> He'll be back <laughs> shortly. Let's get back. We've got Greg O'Brien here to be talking with you today about you know, your background, what you've done, where you're at, and where you're headed to. More importantly, the big question is, how can we get more people involved? And I think it's going to take, you know, the work from Hollywood to possibly get us there. I know you've worked with some uh, uh, large players within the industry, uh, Stephen Greer in the past, and you've done a number of his movies, both written and directed them. We've, I've got to ask the question, how did you get involved into this? <laughs> Um, so I started off as a skeptical debunker of all of this. Oh, wow. Uh, I hated UFOs, conspiracies, uh, religion, psychics, consciousness. I thought it was all crap. And I didn't just think it was wrong. I thought it was immoral and irresponsible for people to be spreading this kind of misinformation and these lies. Um, and I loved arguing with people and just, you know, popping their balloon, you know, when it came to all this stuff. And then I, uh, you know, and I, I would have other skeptic friends who would say, oh, I, I want to believe, uh, but I can't. And I would turn to them and say, why? Why do you want to believe? I'm glad it's not real. Um, and so then I started looking at arguments against my position, uh, not because I suspected I was wrong, but just because I wanted to be able to defeat anybody in an argument. And, and the moment I looked at the arguments against my position and I really looked at the evidence, uh, I realized that I had just been arguing against straw men, right? And my right. position collapsed. And it was very painful. Um, and I, I had to ask myself, well, why is it that I, I wasn't just a non-believer, but I was so opposed to this being real? And the answer that came to me was, well, if this stuff is real, you have to take responsibility for it. 
right? Um, if there's a global UFO cover up, you, you got to speak out. You've got to do something about it. You have to become one of those crazy people, right? Right? Um, you know, if if um, if we're living in a in a universe in which our our thoughts you know, influence or create reality, we have to take responsibility for our own right. thinking, our own vibration, our own happiness. Um, and so I, I, I realized that it was, it was never a debate about evidence. It was really about, um, it, it really about um, how, we, how we participate in the world. And, um, you know, if you, if you really, um, Find your, if you find yourself on our side of these issues, um, you can't just be passive about it. You've got to take a lot of responsibility. And so I actually have a lot of empathy for the people who are who we're arguing against because I think we're asking a lot of them. And I think we have to keep that in mind. So um, since the only thing I know how to do is make documentaries, that's that's what I set out to do. Um, and I was, uh, I was a big fan of, uh, of Stephen Greer's. I, I would just watch his stuff on YouTube. I donated to Sirius. Yeah. Um, and, but I had, I didn't have any real, um, relationship or connection there. Um, and it was really just, uh, in one of his YouTube videos, he said, Oh, we're looking for a filmmaker. And so I shot him a cold email and yeah. that's how I got into it. Interesting. You know? So skeptical, yeah. kind of seeing this stuff, started opening your mind a bit, and you figured you wanted to do something to make a difference, and you threw out one of those blank emails, almost like I sent you for this interview, is trying to say, hey, how can I help? What what can we do to make something like this and bring out the word? And I know there's some people who like Greer, and there's people who may not like Greer, you know, and there's, you know, it, it's almost like religion, where we have this overarching scheme where we've got the government who's been lying to us and keeping all this with us from us, and everybody's aligned underneath that umbrella. But we have these little factions of people based on little bits of stuff that just fragments everybody, at least coming from our side. And if you look at it, clearly if we point our, now not at you, point our, our uh, you know, finger at the government, there's something that connects us all that could potentially help us get the word out but it's also the 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 base of the information if we can help go against that uh uh misinformation disinformation uh machine that they've been putting out there trying to take anybody who says anything about it tell them you're crazy tell them you're a kook that you need to be wearing tinfoil hats that we could find those alignments and try and you know bring out a a concise message from all of us to try and get everybody involved. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're right. And it's, it's hard. Um, I, I often say that like ufology is a lot like high school, um, except when the mean girls start a rumor about you, it's that you're a CIA officer, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's, um, Everyone, when they first get into this, the, they, they, we all have the same idea, which is, oh, we should unify the field. We're all fundamentally on the same side, um, and then we'll be more powerful together. Um, and then at least I quickly realized um, how difficult or impossible that is. Um, and there's just so much, so much infighting, uh, so many competing narratives. Um, so, you know, we, we spend uh, the first half of the day, you know, fighting the government and then the second half of the day fighting our own people. Right. And it's probably not super productive. Um, and I'm uh, I'm probably guilty to some extent, or definitely guilty to some extent of uh, of, uh, you know, uh, playing into those tensions yeah. um, and, and that infighting. But um, it's it's a it's a reality of of this field especially when you're you're dealing with you're dealing with the like the most important things happening on the planet you're dealing with you know the fate of humanity um and so um you know if someone deviates from your narrative just a little bit it's not just a difference of opinion it's you're putting the whole planet at risk so like the stakes are so high you know and then you throw egos into it yeah. and you know 
um it's just it's just total madness yeah um <laughs> i mean there on one point you have an audience who's saying they're all rainbows and unicorns they're here it's right. peaceful and everything you've got other people who i've talked with who have talked about getting abducted several times and these are like higher level people within the old the over the overall movement if you want to call it who have been pinned down and had like a knitting needle type device put around their eye back through the back of their skull into their brain to put something there and it's just like you look at some of this stuff what some people are going through but you know you have to look at it all for, also from the aspect look what we do to every other single animal on this planet and if truly these are a higher level of intelligence and beings and where they are they're looking at us saying well they're doing this to all that why is it not okay for them to do it to us because we always take the point of saying we're the most advanced on the planet. It's all here for us. We can do anything. We're better than everything. When something better comes along, that whole argument kind of falls apart, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, um, this is something that obviously, um, you know, Greer's taken a lot of uh, heat for. Um, and I obviously, I tend to, I tend to share um, his perspective on this. Now, can I say that there's, there's no evil ets out there of course not. there's, there's yeah. good and bad and oh, everything yeah. and he's the he'll be the first one to say that when asked um but you know if first of all if they wanted to annihilate us in an independence day kind of scenario they would they could have done it in a nanosecond with the technology they have um and you know if they were operating at just even at our level of consciousness with the technologies they have they would have blown themselves up so i mean i i, I feel very strongly uh that that's true just from a, a logical perspective oh yeah um but you know um i mean for instance they could people, take one of those yeah, they could take one tic tac right drive it through the side of a warship at their full speed when they would do that there would be enough force to go ahead and bust a hole through both sides and take all matter that's inside that craft and suck it out through that hole and splay it out everywhere with probably out any damage to their craft. So they've got clearly they've got technology that's way the heck up there. So is that Independence Day scenario going to happen? Probably not. Is there something coming probably where not. they want to yeah. work with us on something to try and maybe get the planet ready for another cataclysm? Potentially. It's one of those things that we just have to look at and try and figure out where is it at and not throw it, you know, not throw any good intentions under the bus because clearly our government, the way they've been treating it, the, what they've been hiding, they haven't been the best stewards of welcoming potentially a higher level of life to our planet. Going back in 1952, when there was a swarm of like eight or so saucers flying over Washington, DC, what do we do? We put planes up there and tried to knock them out of the ground. So if there was going to be that, Hollywood moment of the saucer coming down on the White House lawn, we weren't going to let it happen. Yeah, same thing with Battle of Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you listen to, um, you know, some of these these military guys who are on the record in the Disclosure Project and other places, but also just thousands of, of contactees, you know, civilians around the world who've had these experiences the the messages that they're receiving are very consistent it's always stop messing around with nuclear weapons uh care for the earth because you've got real problems and develop your consciousness you know those are the consistent messages and so um i'd say that the the vast majority of the contact uh that's being documented is very positive um now, I also believe when it comes to some of these scary abduction things, um, some of this can be explained by, you know, things that may seem terrifying to us are not necessarily dangerous. Right. So the same way, you know, if a veterinarian is operating on an animal and trying to save its life, the animal is going to be terrified. They're not going to understand that this is actually for their benefit. Um, I think that explains some of it. Um, I also... Uh, I also believe that a, a good amount of this scary abduction stuff is uh, is our military abductions, you know, um, and, you know, Greer and our team, you know, we've had people who won't go on the record because they're terrified, you know, uh, talking about, you know, telling us about this. This has been going on forever. Now, we got a lot of criticism for including Richard Doty 
in unacknowledged right. talking about this. But I've had I've had but, Dodie here before, right. and he's a he, you know he tries yeah. to bring out as much as he can. Continue, sorry. Yeah, no, no, you're good, you're good. I mean, I don't mean to make it a monologue, you know, um, but it's um, you know, Dodie was willing to confirm and we certainly believed him and it was it was really amazing you know being in that room when he when he was talking about this on camera um you know talk about these military abductions and we already knew that to be true but he was the first one to say it on camera right. that's why we included that um and uh, anyway and jacques valet has got um you know a cia document in his possession he wrote about this in his journals um, you know, uh, describing the uh, that they've been hoaxing abductions in in uh, South and Central America and Brazil as part of their psychological warfare operations. It's what it says. I wish he would publish the document. Um, right. He won't. We we're working on that. Um, I understand that, you know, he's got his um, security oaths and all that stuff that he's dealing with. Um, so I think that, um, you know, between you know that sort of um limited human perspective and the military stuff that can account for a lot of the um the sort of terrifying abduction stuff can i say that there are no evil ets doing you know i no one can say that um but i believe that this is a peaceful phenomenon um and um I, I believe, uh, and again, that's, that's informed by also my, my worldview. Um, and, um, you know, I don't believe we live in this materialist, uh, reductionist universe, but, um, that we're in a, a, we're in a conscious universe. And if you look at, uh, the Vedas, you look at the yoga traditions, and even if you look at the Catholic saints, you know, they all say the same things that as you spiritually purify yourself through meditation or prayer or what, whatever your practice is, there are certain spiritual abilities that you can begin to develop. Right. Uh, levitation, telepathy, uh, teleportation, dematerialization, bilocation. Well, what are UFOs doing? Right. They're levitating. They're teleporting. They're dematerializing. Uh, they're bilocating and they're communicating telepathically. I believe that these are civilizations that have millions of years of spiritual development past us. Right. They've all developed these spiritual faculties. And now these abilities are manifesting technologically. Yeah. Or they're potentially manifesting as, as we try to raise the consciousness of everybody on the planet. Speaking along those lines, if you take spirituality and consciousness and disconnected from religion it's one of those things it's this overarching piece that goes over everything that is shared between a lot of the different religions and everybody has a slightly different explanation of it but it all comes together and that's where there's been a lot of people going down the path of shamans and stuff whether they're using uh, dmt or high doses of psilocybin to go ahead and to open up your mind and it does it, it it's a transformative german journey we can see why the government has wanted to probably keep it out of people's hands because it makes you more at one with nature with earth with the universe and opens your mind to a level of consciousness that you know we don't get with our iphones and mcdonald's burgers uh, absolutely you you can't have a national security state um, yes. You know, if people can remote view what you're doing in your in your skiff, right? Um, and and also the the that whole you know that whole global war machine, the military industrial complex, the whole global macroeconomic system, it, it it's all fed by this fundamental story of our separation from each other. Um, and so if we transcend that, it's a, it's a threat. It's a fundamental threat to that system. Yeah, absolutely. Greg. Michael, um, what are your yes, thoughts sir. on CE5 and have you ever practiced it? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've, I've totally practiced it. I, um, I, I didn't really start practicing it until the end of the film actually you know um i was uh so busy documenting it i wasn't really um putting it into practice and i've had some um, amazing beautiful um experiences and um what what you find is that people will start 
doing CE5 because they want to see a, an ET, they want to see a UFO, um, but then they'll keep doing it and it becomes a lifestyle and it becomes a passion because of the transcendent states of consciousness that you can experience when you're, when you're in deep meditation, when you're part of a group, there's that group coherence, uh, which is really powerful. And then um, uh, I haven't personally experienced this, but all of my friends have is, you know, with certain uh, encounters, when, when, you, when you've got a craft there, they feel this overwhelming sense of um, unconditional love. It's almost a, um, it's almost a religious experience. Um, and, sort of like death. You know, like, pardon, like death? Sort of like death, because in that what you experience yeah. towards death, you feel this overwarming feeling of love, and then, you know, it's, it's part of religious feeling. That's kind of weird. I just thought of that. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that's an interesting comparison. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, and I think that's also, kind of how you can tell the difference between is it one of theirs or is it one of ours, you know? Um, well, if you're feeling this, you because we hear this from the contactees over and over and over again, they'd say it's like the craft itself was conscious and alive. You know, they're just sort of intuitively or telepathically feeling this connection. And, but and, here's and, the thing. Yeah. It's the biggest yeah. psyop we've got. It's the focus on the craft. The craft. It the craft is there. It's the things that are inside the craft that we need to peel away that outer shell and understand what's really there and what are they kind of connecting with. But the focus on UFOs, right. UFOs, and UFOs is out out there. It's not them. It's beyond them to a big degree. Oh, you're absolutely right. You know, like when I first got into this field, I jumped right into the deep end with you know CE five and all this stuff. You know, and I'd meet guys, you know, no offense to MUFON, it's a great organization, but I'd meet guys who, are, you know, they've been in this field for 40 years or something, and they can't get past, there's an object in the sky, right? And I'm like, yeah, but we, like, what else? You know, like, what, what what's in there? You know, uh, what's our relationship to these beings? And so I think that's what's way more interesting. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, we've got to get past, oh, there's a machine in the sky. Yeah, we know. Like there's, oh, like, we know. It's, we're way past that. Yeah. We want to know who's flying them, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. what I want to know. The most right. important thing I want to know is what are they doing here? And more importantly, why are they here? Those are the two biggest things. If I go and I talk to my neighbors, I've got someone who just moved in recently, a nice Korean gentleman, uh, came into the neighborhood and he's there with his sons. Um, and as, as he was doing some work one evening, I let him know, I said, hey, some evenings when you're out here, make sure you keep an eye on this particular corridor out here because when you're going through this, there's sometimes we're gonna see these orange orbs that are kind of going through the sky. They're about 300 feet in the air completely silent, totally brilliant, probably about seven, eight feet in size, maybe a bit bigger, depending on the size of it. But we get them on a regular business, uh, on a regular basis. And if you see one, freaking let me know. And it's because he's outside a lot. And it's easy, he, the first question that came out of him. So what's the deal? Why are they here? What are they doing? Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the things that would resonate with a lot of the general public if we can try and get past this military secrecy that's been going on forever that there's still fighting coming out of the executive branch yeah you know and I, I i get that like the official government acknowledgement of this stuff is is important for the majority of people you know um and um and so it's it's good to see progress there um what i'm worried about is as these institutions like the government, like Harvard, um, you know, NASA has announced their program. Now that they're all like appearing to, oh, we're going to take this seriously and we're going to investigate this, um, that these institutions are going to become like the, you know, sort of centralized um, sources of, of information on this. And it's like, well, hang on, these are the institutions that have been covering this up. They've been lying about this forever. Um, so it's good to see an acknowledgement on their part, but they wouldn't be acknowledging this stuff if it, if, uh, they hadn't finally figured out how to make it beneficial to their own, uh, uh, continued existence and relevance, 
Um, and that's that's kind of what we were what we've been warning about. Um, that uh, yeah, you know, the government will keep this secret. Um, you know, they'll, they'll deny it and say it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. But if it's real, it's a threat. And when they finally have to admit that it's real, they present it as a threat. And that's that's kind of what we're seeing with the the language that it's all being couched in. Um, and uh, it's disappointing to see that because, um, you know, I, I turn on Tucker Carlson and there's Nick Pope saying, we've got to shoot these things out of the sky. And, you know, and my, my dad will text me and say, oh, hey, it's, it's on uh, UFOs on Tucker. You must be so happy. And I'm like, actually, I'd prefer that they just continue treating it like a joke. Uh, then, then, you know, saying we should be shooting these things out of the sky. Yeah. Why, why do you um, think they, oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, Greg. Why do you think they um, added the word drones into the whole vocabulary and, and into the um, documents and everything now? Is that just for maybe a money grab? So that way, like the people in Congress can actually maybe grasp on the drones and set up UFOs. It'd be easier to sell. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, uh, that might be the case. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I, ha I actually haven't uh, thought about that. But that's right, a, but that's a good drones, question. right? Though it's like you, drones shouldn't be in a UFO report because drones. Yeah. It's in the it's in the it's in the word. They're identified. Yeah. You know, they're drones. So why even put in why even put that in there? No. Yeah, you know, and again, it's making it about the the machine instead of the the occupant of the machine. You're actually taking the occupant out of the equation, and uh, and and drone is also a uh, a militaristic uh, word. So again, framing it as uh, this is an adversary or this is a threat um, because they're not you know, drones shooting video. You right. Know, that's not what that's not what they mean by drone. It's about misinformation. It's about casting mm -hmm. doubt. And it's something that they've been putting out for the longest period of time, at least in my own perspective. If they can throw mm -hmm. out words and say, oh, it's just a drone or it's just the Chinese or it's just the Russians or something. We go back in time when we had Tic Tacs flying flying over Catalina Island that they caught in the 50s, the flying saucer images and stuff we have. Uh, all the things that have gone on in the past, there's no one in the world at that period of time had been that advanced. And the truth of the matter is, I, I hope, is we're still not that advanced. Because if we really did have some of this technology to go ahead and build, we'd be building it with our current fighter jets. We'd be using that technology as much as we as, as we can. My hope is they have a, a a slim understanding of it. Maybe they have some stuff that's working and they've put together, like in the Cash Landrum case down in Texas where they actually had a UFO that was hooked up to a dirty nuclear reactor that killed some people in the end of it. But um, hopefully we don't it have definitely it. definitely did. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then what happens? The UFO subculture then gets infected with this idea that, oh, aliens are, are, are causing, you know, uh, alien encounters are causing burns and radiation and all this stuff. So again, the ETs get blamed for something that we were doing. Now. You, we, you get too close the, to the a film, fire, the, yeah. you get too close yeah. to a fire, you're going to get yeah. burned. That's right. You know, the film that we're just wrapping up right now, it's just in its its final pro, uh, finishing process, mm. of color correction and sound mix. It's called The Lost Century. It's actually about all of this technology. And in the film, we show these news clippings uh, from, the, uh, from the 50s. You know, saying um, this is actually from Michael Schratt's archives. You know, saying uh, scientists are on the on the verge of of cracking gravity control, and you know we can show article after article in mainstream scientific magazines and newspapers, and then all of a sudden it all goes silent. Yeah. You know, did it all go silent because they all gave up? No, of course not. Yeah. It's because they did it, and a lot of these craft are ours. A lot of this stuff is man-made. And the military industrial complex is happy for you to think it's Russia, it's China. They're even ha they would even prefer for you to think it's extraterrestrials, right? Than for you to think that it's our technology that we've been sitting on. Um, but it's not even, you know, you're talking about a very, very, very small group within the military that would even have access to this. Yeah. You know, as we've documented in um, in unacknowledged. Anna Lewis talked um, about there's compartmentalized silos where unless you're forget the security clearance you have, 
unless your name is on a list that's put there by a particular you know group of individuals you're not going to be able to get access to any of the information and anything that's going on and you know we've got this fight going on right now in congress where Congress is trying to get uh, you know the information out, and even if you look back, and we've got NDAA 2023 that everyone kind of looked at and what's happening, and everyone's excited about the the verbiage. Well, we had great verbiage in 2022. What did the government do? Did they put together the teams they're supposed to be able to dispatch on a moment's notice to go ahead and put teams out there of scientists and technologists and human and, and medical doctors to go out and be dispatched to places where people are having encounters? Where repeat encounters are happening from the military, none of it happened. There's no talk, and there's no there's no teeth or enforcement to get the government to go there. But that's our government now. And you're talking about this upcoming piece. You want to talk about governments and people going out there to try and track down some of this ancient lost technology that you can see in Peru, you can see it in Egypt, you can see it all over the world. They're not Adolf Hitler. He had teams of people trying to go ahead and find this technology because he was convinced that it was there and he could use that for his war machine. That almost sounds like us. Oh, absolutely. You know, but, but, you know, the government the government has a mandate right now to produce everything that it knows about UFOs or UAP. The problem is that that isn't much. The legal constitutional government of the United States doesn't have access to yeah. these programs, right? You you quoted Lou talking about how compartmentalized it is. That's still with special access yeah. programs that are legal. Most of this stuff, the really cool stuff, is in unacknowledged special access programs. Illegal that are ones. Completely off the illegal exactly off the books, right? And so, and it, it's it's hidden in the private sector, right? Yeah. And it's a very, very small group that, that, that has access to this. So how can the government disclose that which it has no access to? Have you read – And then, yeah. quick thing. Have you read the, uh, the uh, disclosure that came out of Australia that released about six months ago? I had papers going back in, uh, from, the seven, from the 50s through early 1971. They listed all the companies where all the technology was going to. They listed all the universities and the scientists who were actually working on this. So, yeah – Absolutely. They have been working on this and they have been trying to figure it out for a long period of time. They have. They have. And to an extent, we, we have figured it out. And, um, you know, I don't know if you've had Michael Schratt on the show. No, I haven't. looked at his, his research and he's a, an incredible aerospace historian who has um, just pieced together the most amazing archives of, um, of, of sightings and the, the development of our so-called alien reproduction vehicles, right? The UFOs that, that are ours, that we've built. Uh, he's done such a great job of, uh, of organizing this information. So he's a big part of this upcoming film and with all these beautiful illustrations that he's created, um, you know, because the real ET craft, they're, they're seamless. Um, they have no rivets. They have no seams. Um, we, you know, it's because they're not manufactured yeah. on a Ford assembly line the way we would make something. Exactly. They're literally, they're literally manifested as a as a whole complete thing. This yeah. is why, you know, when we look at the the metal, you know, we have because we've interviewed people who've been on these crash retrievals, you know, and they look at the metal from the real ET craft under a microscope. It is so pure. It's made out of uh, like out of two hundred some odd isotopes versus the minerals like we have. And honestly, if you take something that's the size of a millimeter by a millimeter of this material, and we wanted to produce it, it would take years and would cost billions of dollars for us to get there. Can I? It, 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 yeah, please. Oh, just real quick. Sorry. Um, do you, th you know you know how we um a lot of people say we get our technology from um you know like we had our fiber optics you know the the microchips and everything well, what mm -hmm. if this is the way we got 3D printing from because to think about how a ship yeah. was put together atom by atom really and then you know as a whole basically isn't that what a 3D printer does yeah and actually that's the analogy we use when we're talking cool. about ET manufacturing it's like transdimensional 3D printing the reason this metal is so pure is that these atoms were just brought into existence from other dimensions to create this craft, right? So that's that's how ETs make stuff. So when you see 
you know, craft that have, you know, rivets and seams and, and, and wires and what looks like off the shelf electrical equipment hanging off of it, you know, and, you know, that's something that's man-made, you know, yeah. that's clearly something that's man-made. If it has um, dials, it has controls, it has an input piece yeah. where you're actually doing it, or if you have to put on a helmet to get there and control it, that's humanity. From their yeah. stuff, it's almost like consciousness, really. Exactly. It's it's and, and their consciousness is totally integrated into the into the craft itself and how it maneuvers. So it's um I, I think that um a great deal of the sightings that we have um are actually our own things. And now we have this, in my opinion, this troubling narrative shift where they've gone from denying it to saying, Oh, gee, we better we better look into this because this could be a threat and this is China's tech, but it's really, it's really ours. And you know, we got in we got so much um pushback and so much heat. Uh, for the um, the cosmic hoax, which was like a free video we put out in 2021, when we were warning, like, hey, you know, look at the language; they're going to do a false flag. Yeah. Now, false flag. Do I think they're going to do an, a fake alien invasion like Independence Day? Hell no. Yeah. All they have to do is blow up one boat, and 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 have a press conference and blame it on ETs, and that's it. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. You got to remember the military classifies everything as a threat a heavy rainstorm is a threat has a threat narrative to it <laughs> a right. a flock of seagulls has a smaller threat threat narrative than a flock of canadian geese that you have to avoid so everything the military is going and trying to look at this is identify it as it a threat everything what is the threat of the moon what's the threat of a high high tide so we have to pull that back but you know we're getting this uh loud echo of the drum coming from some of the former pilots who are out there you know talking about this trying to put in this fear into it saying our commercial airliners and all of those and all of our planes are at risk from what's going on well the truth of the matter is have we lost one really airliner that we can actually look at and say we've lost to it how many lives have been lost towards this so far it's zero but because exactly. some of these people may have jobs working with external, I mean, military contracting organizations, whether it's from technology or actually craft themselves, they have a benefit for calling it a threat and classifying it as a threat, because that means money can start come flowing into their organizations to start justifying this quote unquote danger and threat narrative that's truly, from my perspective, being manufactured at this point in time. Yeah, I'm in total agreement with that. The easiest thing to do is manufacturers ideas, right? You don't really have to materialize them. All it takes is one thought to put out there and the whole world can go apeshit. Yeah, especially when you've got this coordinated media propaganda machine that's uh, totally centralized and it's easy to, you know, promote whatever narrative you want. And so um, it's, um, it's, it's really troubling. This is where the CE5 initiative is really cool. I know that uh, Dr. Greer, as you mentioned at the beginning of this, he's a you know, divisive figure within the community and that's fine. You know? um, put that aside, don't let that stop you right. from going out and trying to make contact because you know, it's one thing to, to sit here and look at videos and theorize. It's another thing to go out and form your own relationship yeah. with the phenomenon. Oh, I know because- And then, yeah. And then, and then you don't have to ask me if it's a threat or ask Dr. Greer if it's a threat. You'll have your own answers based on, you know, now it, it, it's, um, it's, you're interacting with one, with one aspect of the phenomenon. That's, mm. that's, that's like always the counter argument, right? To what I just said, but it's, it's still like, it's the difference between reading about sex or actually having it. You know, it's like go out and actually have your own experience. Yeah, absolutely. But it's one of the things I have to admit, at least from my history of dealing with stuff. I'm an advanced meditation person. I was actually abducted back when I was five, between the ages of five and eight, starting in 1973 in the Chicago suburbs. And it changed my life and probably changed who I am. And it's the main reason that I'm here in this particular situation. And we just have to look at the different possibilities of why what happened why is it here why are we in this particular place and also understand that if it happens for me at least if you reach out and you make a connection it's something that doesn't go away 
it's a lasting connection. It's almost like a bond or a consciousness. It's like opening a door that she can never close. And, I, and some of the meditation pieces that I've done in the past, some in the last time where I was uh, taking a, a chakra crown-based meditation, mixing it with samadhi, and uh, broadcasting out really simple, simple one word at a time, come here now. But with each one of those broadcasting out a memory with an emotion, with a single word, do it three times, put your hand down when you're touching the ground. For me, it was strategic. I put it down over the water system. There is a, a, an access pipe that came up. So if I'm going to broadcast out where it is, use water. It's a great amplifier of our consciousness for wh whatever reason. And you, you know, when you do things and you get an answer, like you're saying, it's sometimes better to be in that group scenario. I won't do it alone again. Based on some of the stuff that I got back and what you dealt with, it was kind of like I was, I was trying to get a light show, but what I got was a heavily consciousness connection and all this information in 3D and visuals, like I'm actually there experiencing it, just pouring into my mind all of a sudden, suddenly, and then words that want to come out of your mouth that aren't from you and you don't really remember because they're coming out, but you just let the stuff flow. So it's in a... It, there's a lot of weight to this stuff, and it's so much beyond that little box of humanity we all understand. That's that's so cool what you just described, and yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, and you know, even dealing with skeptics, I was doing an interview a week ago with uh, someone who just doesn't even believe that UFOs are real. I mean, we're we're like at, at step one, you know. And we got into all the consciousness stuff, and and I'm uh, basically the takeaway was, you know, if you've got someone who's been in ufology for forty years and they can recite every case, and you know, um, but they have no, um, they have no meditation practice, they have no sense of connectedness to the world, to the cosmos, to the phenomenon, versus someone who thinks it's all BS, but starts meditating. Yeah and fills their heart with love yeah. and is putting out that, that vibration that second person wins yeah they you know because because the first person missed the whole point right you know and um and and, and so part of it is you know is our worldview yeah. right and uh we, we talked about the worldview of the national security state they can only reach one conclusion yeah. about the phenomenon right? i have to say really so quick why, yeah. thank you for yeah. calling us the national security state or the national security states of america because that's exactly what we live in and the laws that were passed in 47 so many people are just oblivious to it thank you so much for using that terminology because it's so powerful but it's so true it's what it is it's what it is um you know it's um you know, people love to like throw throw the word fascism around. You know, anything I don't like or any person I don't like is a fascist. Well, fascism has a very specific definition, and when you look at what that definition is, it's it's kind of depressing because you realize that we're living in a totally fascist country to the point where you know, asking an American what is fascism, it's like asking a fish what is water. Half the people you know? are going to point at Trump, and half the people are going to point at Biden. Rather than exactly. pointing at the institution that's there, that allows it to happen. Yeah, it's it's the whole system, yeah. right? Um, and um, and so yeah, everyone hyperventilating about Trump being a fascist. I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> and you know, because um, it's a fascist system. Not all of our presidents are, and um, and so you know what? It, so when someone says what's a threat to national security, when when they're saying this, what they really mean is what's a threat to our corporations? Yeah. You know, uh, what is an economic threat? What is a threat to oil, uh, gas, and coal? You know, fossil fuel industry, the chemical industry, and increasingly the pharmaceutical industry. Oh, Have you done um, any research into Monsanto yet? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've got uh, Lee is in our chat. He's been doing an amazing piece of Monsanto and all the different stuff they've involved in. My God, they go back all the way to the thirties with some of the stuff they were involved in. They had all these people from Bell Labs that all came together and they were, you know, a very important piece of this whole piece. I mean, heck, they even created the initial material to ignite our nuclear bombs because nobody else could do it. Oh, I, I didn't know that, but oh, I'm yeah. not surprised at all. You know, I mean, this is, um, you know, the military industrial complex isn't just, um, you know, a buzzword, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it encompasses all of these industries and, um, and, and that, that merger with, um, with 
the instrumentalities of the state, the military and our legislative power and our regulatory power, that is the military industrial complex. That is fascism. I mean, that's, 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 that's what it is. That's the definition. The definition of fascism is using the instrumentalities of the state um, to, um, to support the interests of, uh, of the corporations. You know, that's what we're living in. So what happens when that system uh, encounters this technology, right? Encounters the crash from Roswell. Well, they say, let's get it for us and we're going to keep it secret and it's going to be, you know, and, um, and, and, and so what's the result? The result is we are living in a total construct. We're not supposed to have roads and cars and power lines and, and, you know, and all this crap. It's, it, it's, it's garbage. This all should have been gone a hundred years ago. Uh, we're living in a Truman show is the, is the analogy that we, uh, we use in this upcoming film. And it's the perfect analogy. Um, you know, UFOs are not, or I should say ET craft uh, are not filling up with Exxon gasoline. No. You know, these are, go for it, Greg. Okay. Yeah. What can get us out of this Truman show? Since everything's so divided, I mean, we can't even agree on the word fascist, right? I mean, we look at everything. Unfortunately, people look at a vid- 53 people look at one UFO video and you'll get 53 different kinds of opinions. And this will not do so. I mean, how can we how can we stop it? I mean, the wheels on the bus mm-hmm. go round and round, but there's no end in sight. Yeah. Um, so I used to I used to believe like, oh, we have to. We have to evangelize. We have to get the word out. Uh, you know, uh, I got to you know make unacknowledged and show it to as many people as possible. And we're gonna w- we're gonna wake people up. And you know, and um, I don't believe that's the right tactic yeah. anymore. Um, I really think it's about um, it's such a it's such a cliche. Um, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. But there's real metaphysical power in that. Yeah. When you realize that each of us are manifesting the world around us. So rather than feeling despair, when you look at this UFO cover up and feeling helpless, realize that since it's in, it's within your awareness, it's within your experience, there is something within you that has contributed to the manifestation of the situation that we're living in. So take personal responsibility, it's not blame, Right. It's actually the most empowering thing you can do. It's the opposite of helplessness. Right. Uh, It's saying, wow, this is all a projection of something within me that needs to be healed. And so that first step is to uh, is to take that responsibility. It's so powerful. Right. Saying I alone have the power to neutralize this Um, and then cultivate a. Um, a, a meditation practice or a spiritual practice. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Ho'oponopono, which is a um, Hawaiian practice of healing and, for, and self-forgiveness, um, where you um, you know you look at the things in your in the world around you that um, that cause pain or shame or anything that's unwanted. And you you feel those feelings within you, and then you you repeat a mantra, which is "I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you," and you're basically asking the divine or whatever you want to call it yeah. to cleanse whatever it was within your subconscious mind that contributed to the manifestation of this. And you'll see miracles happen in your life as you do this. I think that's the most empowering way to. Um, to relate to not just the UFO cover up, but any suffering in yeah. the world. Yeah, we've got a super chat coming in from Angel Wings, just kind of yeah. resonating with what you're saying. And she says, basically everything has been a lie. I keep my mind open to anything at this point. And that's where a lot of people need to open up their mind to it, kind of. And just, and I, maybe that's the biggest key we need to bring across is, yeah, the government has been lying to us. They have been covering up. And if we can get them to start seeing that, in a factual way that uh, disinformation and misinformation is going to start to melt away because people are going to be realizing they haven't been hearing the truth. They haven't been delivered. They haven't been delivered the facts. Absolutely. Um, But it's so 
it's so easy when you have your red pill moment, right? Whatever it is, whether it's the, um, you know, UFOs being in the news, for a lot of people, it was Jeffrey Epstein, you know, people's heads exploded, right? When that happened. Um, and, and then it's easy to kind of spiral from there. And, uh, you know, end up, you know, in a place of despair, or you end up in, you know, QAnon chat rooms, a lot of my friends ended up there, you know, because it's, you lose, um, you, you've had the rug pulled out from under you when you when you wake up to the lies. And it's really important to ground yourself um, and in, in some kind of meditation or spiritual practice. It's really, yeah. really important. Um, because it's so easy to um, to just become despondent and yeah. depressed over this, and there's no there's no reason there's no reason to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's the thing: you bring up the meditation thing and consciousness. One of the things that I've seen there is a way for us to go ahead and potentially get if we want to have that moment where we have thousands or hundreds of UFOs coming down around the world at one time. Is we have to reach out in a way that really shows meaning. And if we just stay within our own community of people who are there and part of the UFO phenomenon stuff, it's a very small group. There are YouTube channels out there and large organizations that organize worldwide uh, meditation sessions and being able to be able to call out and reach out. And we can work with a, uh, Awaken the World film or other ones where they organize these events and get them to use the skills and that they have to welcome, to ask, to, you know, have them bring down and show themselves. And if we can get it to go around the planet as it's rotating and get this message as it's hitting different time zones to happen, maybe we can, as a group, as a conscious, as a group consciousness, be able to convince all these things we have around us that the time is ready. Absolutely. That's, that's one of the most, if not the most productive thing we could possibly do with our energy. We've got to, we have to be constantly putting positivity out there yeah and empowering one another because just screaming about the injustice of it all and it is incredibly unjust you yeah. know and we're talking about technologies that would have that would have uh gotten rid of poverty and hunger a hundred years ago yeah right how many millions of people i should know because it's in the film but i don't remember um how many millions of people die every year because of air pollution? You know, all of this is totally yeah. avoidable. We should all be living like immortal billionaires. Right. We could have had it a hundred years ago. So, you know, it's so tempting and natural to just want to yeah. go to that place of, right. of rage, but it doesn't accomplish anything. You, you know, and the hardest uh, yeah. thing we've got is when you connect with the phenomenon in cases like I've had, in cases that have gone on, what's been talked about in the aerial schools, they show you things. And it's not just like seeing a picture. You're actually there, and it's around you, and it's r as real as day as it ever could be. And it's that understanding of what they've done, where they're at, the importance of what could potentially happen if we don't go ahead and change ourselves and change the way we look at the planet, the way you said earlier about we need to get rid of some of this technology, some of the things and our practices of, you know, getting rid of the Amazon and polluting the earth. And yes, we know we have stuff out there with global warming. A lot of it is all driven by the sun. We're not going to have much of an impact to change it all because all we're doing is we're just changing our carbon footprint from one spot and raising another. And it gives you, again, that false sense of security, that false sense of illusion to saying, hey, we're doing the right thing. When in reality, we're not really going forward. If not, we're staying the same or moving back. This is so, this is so important. There is not going to be a technological solution to our problems, right? Um, yes, we have the super advanced, you know, zero point energy and propulsion technology and all these things that could you will give us a new civilization that's hidden in these programs. But if we had our hands on that technology with our current level of consciousness, we'd blow ourselves up. Exactly. Heartbeat, that's right? why one of the things and, is yeah. I hear our government and what they want to do and what they're saying. And I'm, I pray that we haven't figured this stuff out because it would bring on the end of humanity as we know it, because we would use it. We wouldn't use it to put forward for energy and civilization. 
It's the same way why everything is all locked up in these secret programs is because they want it for war. They, we want, it, they want it for war. Sorry. Go we, ahead, definitely, we definitely don't want Ted next door in the shed having this kind of stuff, right? For sure. That's for certain. But back back to what you were saying, Michael, um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a pessimist at heart. So I'm afraid that we're not really conscious. So we're just pretty much aware. And I, I blame the brain. I think the brain is the rock that holds us to this earth, you know, because we don't take it with us when we die. Our brain stays behind us. And it's a perfect computer to mess with through frequency and vibration. And how easy would that be able to you know, you'd be able to do something like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> You know, everyone talks about like the uh, the energy and propulsion technology, but it's all kinds of other, you know, horrors that have been developed in these programs, you know, mind control stuff. And also there's fascinating medical stuff, you know, that would, you know, the ability to regrow limbs. I mean, just there's so much that's been that's been kept from us. But um, I wanted to just go back to something Thomas said and just just touch on it with the climate change stuff. Um, the we just we just interviewed a guy named Charles Eisenstein who I'm a huge fan of. It was a great honor to get to interview him, and I I recommend his book to everybody. It's called Climate: A New Story, and you know he he talks about in this book that like um, it doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong in the climate change debate because both sides are operating on assumptions that have already doomed us to a dystopian future. And those assumptions are that we're separate from each other, we're separate from the earth, that the earth is just a dead rock instead of a conscious being. Um, and um, and he, he goes to the root of the problem, you know, that is, this isn't just about how much carbon dioxide is in, is in the air. You know, we've had higher levels of CO2 in the past without having a climate problem. But, the, but at those times in the past, the Earth's organs were intact. The forests, the rivers, the, the, the organs that would allow the Earth to deal with those higher levels of CO2. So we're kind of, we're dealing, he likens it to like, we have someone dying from a flesh-eating virus and the doctors are standing around debating whether or not they have a fever. Yeah. Right? And the the fundamental problem is this global economic system that is feeding our consumption this hole within us that we're trying to fill with crap that we don't need and so it's such a it's such a beautiful and profound and mind expanding book and i had to do a lot of research on climate for this film because we do talk a little bit about it uh, and this book was just, just absolutely blew my mind so i wanted to recommend that before i've got a Sadly, jump off. Yeah, what, which, what's the name of the book again? Uh, Climate, A New Story by Charles Eisenstein. Let me write this down here. Oh, yeah, I think you'd really dig it. Absolutely. Man, you are an amazing individual. I'm surprised that you haven't been talking on more places because your knowledge, you're like, I'm not sure what the heck we're going to talk about. <laughs> but, you know, we've talked about some of the stuff, but the knowledge you have, where you came from of being someone who was you know, completely doubting everything to getting into it, opening your mind to it, and now trying to help bring forward uh, humanity is an amazing piece. You're doing a phenomenal, uh, if you want to call it, dedication to humanity to try and bring the message out. And I thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really comfortable uh, doing interviews usually. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to put myself out there a little bit more. Um, yeah. And get over get over the uh, stage fright. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate you uh, welcoming me, and thank you, Greg, uh, for your uh, for your questions. It was cool connecting with you. Yeah, I love it, man. I'm so grateful uh, to both of you guys, and uh, I've learned so much. And it's 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 great to be a part of such uh, great conversations. And this is what we need more of. Uh, let's yeah. keep it going. Yeah, it's been an hour already. Uh, you've got a hard stop. I appreciate you coming out here today, Michael. Thank you so much. You're an amazing Thank you. gentleman. Thanks for coming on and yeah. talking about this. Wish we could dive more into the whole stuff, talking about uh, psilocybin and DMT and that whole consciousness part and something. Oh, next time. Next time. Next exactly. Time. Well, yeah, I was just about absolutely. to say that we can do that next time. If you would come back, yeah. I'd love to have you back again when you have time. Yeah, I'd love to. And uh, are you in Los Angeles? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Seattle area. 
you're in the Seattle area. Yeah. Uh, let's let's connect offline. See if I can get you to the uh, the premiere of this next doc. Um, we haven't locked the date yet. It should be sometime. In, uh, That'd be cool. In uh, the summer. Yeah, my yeah. immune system was screwed up as a child from my adventures up in the sky, and uh, they thought I had leukemia. They had they thought I had non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Then they always came back and they say. You're abnormal but inconclusive. We can't figure out what you had when the whole virus thing went around three years ago. I was one of the first people to get it. And my immune system, that particular part of it, uh, mashed up with, uh, what was it, uh, um, lymphocytic post-COVID vasculitis. So I'm on, I've been on anti-immune drugs, what they give to people who have leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, for the last three years because otherwise my body's going to kill myself. It's trying to self-destruct. Oh my God! I'm so sorry that you're dealing with that. Yeah, it's it, it makes you stronger, makes you see see stuff differently. If I can figure out a way to get down to the premiere or something like that, yes, absolutely. I appreciate you even offering that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'll definitely definitely be back, and let's stay in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Michael. What a great guest you have been today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks. I'm glad. Good night. Cheers, guys. Yes, absolutely. Let me go ahead and just change out guest one from caller one to Greg O'Brien, who's going to pop right in. Ooh. Let's now get over to studio with one guest. Greg, what do you think? You know, I wasn't sure what to think about this. And yes, you know, that he, he may not be the favorite for some people because he's involved with Greer, but you can hear where he's coming from and the message he's trying to bring out. And I think he's an amazing individual. Yeah, um, yeah, it's you got it's you said it right there. Individual, we treat people as individuals, yeah. right? Based upon everything they do and what they that was the, that was one of the greatest conversations, man. Thank you for uh, inviting me along. I appreciate. Oh yeah, this. absolutely, absolutely. If you want to hang out for a bit, I'm gonna open up, and there's a bunch of people in the audience. I'm sure like to come in and talk. But for we before we do that, I actually get to play the music once, and. I'm there it comes. I want to thank everybody for their wonderful super chats today. Holy cow. Uh, uh, Florence Tracy just gave in the last one. I was just being kind to the guests, trying to bring them up. The first two I didn't see. Sorry, I missed it, but I did say thanks into the chat for everybody. Florence Tracy, I, I'm a seven year old. I am a 78 year old and saw my first UFO uh, and many since. Uh, I didn't. Seven inch beer. Either way. Yeah. Um, Great conversation. It's great to see that there are people who are trying to come together. And again, the way I'm looking at this, ufology is kind of like a religion. We have to look at the common core that we all believe, which is, yes, we know there's stuff out there. Yes, we know our government is doing some nasty things, and we need to fight against the government and whatever we have to do. And if we can have that single point that we're all trying to go against, maybe we've got a chance to go ahead and take this to the next level. Yeah, you guys had a current. You guys had an undercurrent the whole time. Also, great, great conversation, great questions, Tom's. By the way, yeah. Let me go ahead. And, go ahead, sir. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, it it was um, division, not disclosure. Yeah, those are two different D words, right? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make sense. It's just more division. With with division, there will be no disclosure. Oh, I know. And well, I I guess so. But I'm the kind of person who's seeing where we're at now. We've got to figure out ways how we can bring ourselves together. How can we get past some of this division and find more of a unity for the people who do are on the side of understanding where we're at and acknowledging it versus the people who are in the middle and the other people who are the debunkers, which you may just have to write off in some degree way because some people you're going to say as many things as you possibly can but you're not going to be able to change anybody's mind. Well, there, there you, I mean, I don't think that's right because it, it, need, it needs to involve everybody because in order for involve everybody in the naysayers, that means there has to be undeniable proof. Oh, absolutely. Now, if I can find the window, because I'm going to have to switch to a different version of my layouts for OBS, but I need to get your link because you're going to you van. You want me to get out of here? What? Do you need me to get out of here no. and then? No, you can stay in here if you want. I'm okay. just going to go ahead and, and bring that across. Give me a second. We are in guest one. We're in one guest. I've got that. Let me go ahead and see if this doesn't blow up OBS. I've never changed scenes when it was running. Let's see if we survive. If not. If not, man, I'll uh, see you on no, the No, if not, I'll, this stream will be right back up and I reload OBS. Okay, let's cross our fingers. All right, we are back live again. Sorry about the delays. I said it might crash, and sure enough, it did. Greg just popped out of there. And he's going to be coming back in for it. So let me go ahead and find out where is 
Oh, did I come into the right wrong one? I might crash again. <laughs> oh, I don't have chat in here, do I? Which one what is I in? Here, let's try it one more time. Wait, if it's, it should be in this one. Moon logo, that's all there. I'm trying to find it where I have it set up with the chat. Let me try one more setting. I might blow up again. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. I'm in interview. How in the hell did I get here? Let me try it again. Uh, might go boom, but I'm going to try it one more time. It survived. All right, we didn't crash this time, and I can get back in two. There, no, not there. All right, I'm back. We made it. And I've got the wrong title card. Let me go ahead and change this out really quick here. Yeah, I was, uh, I've got a couple different collections of layouts for uh, the show itself that allows me to go ahead and bring in guests and everything. And if I have too many things there, it freaks out. And we're past all that at this point. Holy cow, why am I pushing so much? Okay. It's leveling off. On that note, let me go ahead and bring up the chat really quick here. Copy the URL for the people in our audience. If you guys want to join us, I'm going to... Tom King, another super chat coming in. Thank you very much, sir. I greatly appreciate your support and love for the channel. Uh, if I can find the stuff to bring it up on screen, I'll do it in a second. Let me go ahead and find the chat. Where's the chat? Here we go. Let's see. Uh, viewer call in. It's like... Starting a second show when the show's still going. Here we go. Uh, sent out into it. Okay, if anyone wants to jump into the conversation and have anything to say about the thing, it was a great conversation. Let me take and hide Gary. There we go. If I've got Google Chat is there, if anyone wants to pop in. Holy cow, great conversation tonight with Michael Mazzola. You know, this is at a point where we need to work with everybody about it this is something that i've been saying about bringing the community together bringing all of us as a unified voice against the government we absolutely need to it's one of those things that oh i need it <laughs> wait a second the meeting is there and i just copy the link and i didn't even join the meeting hold on <laughs> oh god start an instant meeting that's why it's not going to work uh, allow, copy it. Here we go. One more time. Forget about what I've said about your call in. Here's the right link. Your call in with me. Copy the link one more time just to be sure. Copy URL. All right. Viewer, one more time. All right, there you go. It's now in the chat. I'll pin that at the top of the chat. Pin message. I've got that. I need to start up my camera again. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, Greg O'Brien is back. Greg, how you doing, my friend? Here comes Florence Tracy. All right, a mom is here. And Joseph Syracuse. <laughs> wow, holy cow. Let me get across to Google Chat. I need to arrange the window in the right way for this matter. There we go. Hold on one second. Everything has moved around, so the usual thing I have in place to grab the people, I have no idea where it's supposed to be, so give me a second. Hey, Mom, how you doing? Good to see you. I have no idea where it's supposed to be. Hello, Thomas. How you doing? How you doing? I think someone might, I think you might still have YouTube up and going in the back, Mom. Are you going? Are you going? Sure, sure. Wow, we get mom gets to come in today. That's amazing. Larry, <laughs> finally get to see you. Holy cow! Let me. Uh... Oh, go away. <laughs> There's the whole family. Hey, how's it going? Adele and Mark. Mark, good to see you in the background. we got Adele and we've got Mom Florence. This is freaking great. We never get to see you. There you go. Turn that off either way you want to do. But uh, great to have everybody here. Um, what did you think of the conversation, Mom? What did you think of the conversation, Mom? Did you enjoy it, Mom? Uh, I'm, I was a bit biased because he was very um, green. Um, Stephen Green, Green World. Um, 
and I've never I liked him at the beginning, that's Steve, and I and I did like him for about two or three years and then he twigged. He he was just a con man. He was a slimy con man as well. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bunch of different yeah. ways to look at it, but it, it, he's he's and, he, and that other one, what's his name? Don't mince your words, mother. Yeah, no, I won't mince my words. What, what's that other one that we met? It was a uh, 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 black bull. Golf, what was it? Yeah, and that Doherty. Doherty, yeah. Yeah, and that Doherty. Doherty, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you still yeah. have. I think you still That's have it. YouTube on in the background, Mom. We can hear the echoing coming through the microphone. Hold on, give me a Not a problem. Not a problem. We also have other a couple of other people joined in. Greg is back. Uh, let's see who else we have in the audience right now for people. We also have uh, Larry. What? Go ahead, Mom. That's a little bit better now. Go ahead, Mom. Turn that one off. Almost there. <laughs> hey, I'm used to audio issues, so don't feel bad. I'm used to audio issues, so don't feel bad. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here now. I'm on my own. Now. I don't. We're not used to them, are we? I'm just telling you that. Oh, they can barely right, hear me. Now. One, two. I they think should... so. I don't know lost it we're here we're here mom right there you can speak now mom yeah let me speak. make sure you're on the right I mic know, hold on you, you might be oh i know why hold on uh, no wonder why you, you can't hear me in the background i can fix that hold on that's my fault mark have moved in with you haven't we yeah they've moved they've, they've all moved in with me with, because i haven't been too well i've been having bad falls and i had a bad fall and if she hadn't been in the house i would have been very 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 in a mess so they've moved, all moved in. It's a big house. Yeah. And they've all moved in. And three grandsons as well. Oh, that's wonderful. And three, and three dogs and two cats. Oh, that's, that's a whole family and all, all around you again. Cats. That's wonderful, Florence. You yeah, know, it, it, it's sad to hear that you had a fall and everything, but your family came around you and they're all with you. And that's just an amazing piece when you've got a loving, caring people, especially the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> to, to come and spend time and help you get through this and uh yeah. that's great gary gary uh who's on the show a lot he's from the united kingdom he lives with his mom as well with his partners so it's uh it's a nice thing that we really don't see that happening that much in the united states unfortunately yeah yeah you've got a big house you're rattling around in it well, I, have a, I have a big house it's about six bedrooms three bathrooms god knows how many what other rooms so I was just rattling around in here on my own and I went upstairs and I got up in the middle of the night for a cigarette and I was rolling myself a cigarette and I fell on the floor and bang. That were it. You didn't, so, you didn't break your hip, did you? Is your hip all right? Yeah, my hip's all right, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, I'm glad I'm to hear. Care. I'm going to the doctors on Monday. Good. You know, uh, yeah. may, maybe it's something with your heart. Uh, maybe it's something with your heart where you're standing up, you're going to move around, and you know, you, you, you your balance goes out or your ability to yeah, stay standing it. goes out. I am a lot of them. I'm on a lot about fifteen tablets a day. I've got same as you. This tell me I've got um, leukemia, leukemia, yeah. and I keep and I go backwards and forwards. No, you've not got it. No. No, yeah. I've got stuff that doctors think is leukemia that they think is yeah. is is uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, and you know I've had multiple oncologists around the United States. Whenever they see my blood, they all freak out and say, "Mr. Professor, we have some bad news." Yeah. And it's like, yeah. "What? I've got this?" And they're like, "Yeah." yeah. It's been going since nineteen sixty six. This. Wow. Yep, aliens. <laughs> but. But you know, it it could be. A, I never lost my sense of humor, though. Yeah, it, it could be a side effect of it. It's something that has never been explored. But if you're another person who's had, so. yeah, I'm sure, you're definitely a side effect, mother. Yeah, I'm definitely a side effect. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. I'll put you. I'll let you go and talk to other people. Yeah. Well, this. Then I. God bless. God bless. And this is I just. 
<laughs> hey Adele, hey Mark, and this is just amazing to have you call in. Thank you so much for calling in. We've always seen you in there. I was always hoping that you would call in, and you did. Thank you. You know, you made my day. Uh, we had a great interview yeah, and uh, a great. Go ahead. A grandson did a hair today, and she's got all dressed up. She's sat in a dress and everything, waiting for you to put the link up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's made your night now, hasn't it? It's made my night. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm right. sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't bring in the chat and everything early today for the main reason that we had an interview and, it, you know, we only had a short amount of time to be there. And that's why as soon as it was yeah. done, I brought it up. But next week, hopefully, I'd love to see your dress. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next time. Yeah. yeah. All right. You yeah. say good night. Good night. Lots of love. Thank good you very much. Wow. All right. Bye, Thomas. Bye-bye. Bye, see ya. Have a good one. Thanks for calling Hi, in Gary. again. <laughs> Gary's not there tonight, Mom. Well, <laughs> no, yellow Tommy Tanker just came in, uh, Andy. So, what a great surprise! Thank you so much for calling in. You guys are great. I love you all. Thank you. Hi, Florence. Yeah, really, really great to hear you. Let's take the phone off. Right, you have to excuse me. I had, I had computer problems before I came on, so I'm I'm a bit out of the loop. Do you want to hang up, Florence, or do you want to listen in here? I, I can hang up. I'm trying. Up. I don't know what to do with the phone. So I'm just just, just quit minute. the application, or there's a button at the bottom that's a red button that, that'll let you hang up. Right. Okay. You're perpetually stuck here forever. <laughs> <laughs> it could uh, be with me and technology. Let's see if I can do me. this and remove from the call. Can you disconnect, please? Yep, I'll disconnect you right now. Thank uh, you. Just remove. There you go. Okay. I did the button. I pressed the button for her remotely and everything. Great conversation today, Joseph. We had Greg here for the for, for his part of it. Greg said, man, you could have handled that by yourself. But when I've got Cupcake here and everything running around, Greg has been a part of the interviews and such in the past. I am so blessed to have him as a good friend and someone who could step in and be a part of this great conversation. That was an awesome, awesome uh, interview. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It de Thank you for letting me be a part of it, Thomas. I'm, I'm very grateful. That that was, I mean, just e e knowledge of information and just, I mean, it could have, we could have kept going, but um, hopefully there'll be another time soon. Yeah, I, I hope so as well. To tell you the truth, I'm just trying to get this where I can. I chip in, Thomas, as as a listener. Yeah, I, I, I was in and out because of issues here, but absolutely great great uh interview and, and and really good guest now i know people don't like stephen greer but he's i haven't had a lot of issue i've never come across him to be honest um diving into all of this yeah don't um, worry i'm fixing the camera right now everybody just bear with fine. me right now i'm trying to make it so when people are talking the lips are going to be in sync and i know how to make that happen all right almost there yeah, um, Stephen Greer. Yeah, I know he's a he's a moot point in the subject. People people like him. People really don't like him. Right. Um, it, it's it's chalk and cheese. But um, I thought he was a really great interview. Um, yeah. And and a great guest to come along. Um, right. Obviously, we have to take him, Michael, for his own opinions, not for Stephen Greer's. Right. Now, um, I know Larry made a a, a point about him being a, a um an acolyte of Stephen Greer, I think it was. But again, you know, and, that, and that's not, Larry's not here right at this moment, but um, that's, that's nothing against Larry's opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinions, but we have to take Michael as his own person. Right. And and some of the stuff aligns from where he's at. I mean, you have to look at where he's at, who he's been working with, and it's all a part of it. I see it as, from, uh, for, as something where, again, Greer's got his belief of stuff. There's other people that believe him or don't. There's people yeah. who are Team Lou and not Team Lou. We're Team Lou here at Disclosure tonight. So there's a lot of situations we have to go ahead and take a look at and understand. Not everyone's going to see the same thing. And I've, I've been saying this a bunch, that everybody, we need to come together as a community. We need to look past the differences of the small things. We need to point at our federal government down in Washington, D.C. This is the enemy. It's not the people who are going off in some different directions that's fine there's always going to be that way it's that way in religion it's going to be that way in disclosure but if we can put aside some of those variances and look we have a common goal that we want the truth to come out there's a lot more of us and the more we have as a group the better chance we have to actually accomplish something so we can say oh this person's a shill or whatever it is that's fine but you know what the more people we have that can possibly open up the minds of many, that's my goal. That's something that I'm seeing that if that I'm trying to 
broadcast and say it's because for me it's important for us to get there we need to get past this differences we have look at it and be able to tear the truth out of the government you know, but I, go ahead can i sorry tom um can i interject as well i'm i'm very lucky but I've been a, a, a interested in UFOs since I, as long as I can remember, basically, or at least since I, was, I saw had my first sight in it about 15, 16 years old. But with what, what's going on at the moment, I've been very fortunate that I haven't had a lot of input into UFOs uh, on YouTube. Apart right. from the last, when you popped up on my, on my feed and I started. So I've not been skewed by the poison that sometimes has been happening slightly prior to when i came on the scene um on youtube so i'm not skewed i i, I um i caught up with the interview with ufo jesus today um but you you had some of yeah. um last night and actually for, personally for me a lot of what he said had resonated really yeah. well um and i'm i'm not i'm i'm not pro ufo jesus i'm not pro Stephen Greer because I don't personally know enough about these people to be skewed or poisoned by, yeah. by everything that's gone on prior to me coming online uh, uh, into this subject um, which I'm, I'm sort of starting with fresh eyes which actually is in my opinion quite a nice thing not to have to deal with yeah. all of the fallout that's happened um, I, I wasn't here when you you had um, Lewis Lou on on the scene um, on on your channel, right? Um, and and I I I've picked up by what you've said and what's been happening in in the past on the channel, but it's 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 a fresh pair of eyes for me, and it, it's really nice to get somebody else's opinion who might be affiliated with Greer but isn't Greer, right? But a lot yeah. of the stuff that Greer said is there and it goes along with it. Again, it's just trying to be positive no matter what situation we have. Uh, Larry, you have your hand up? Yeah. Hey, Thomas, that was a great interview. Um, you really um, asked the great question. You had just a good, good energy. So you were in really great form. And um, the guest I found was heartwarming um he, he he has a heart especially came out at the end especially um so uh, to me that's the most important thing as long as he's fairly uh accurate about other things and he is yeah um <clears throat> i disagree um with the idea that we have uh, our own technology technology that is you know and and Thomas does too. It works yeah, out. I mean, we, um, we we do know of one case where we did have technology that wasn't ours, and we tried to use it and ended up killing people, which was the Cash Lantern incident that we had down in Texas that yes. happened a long time yes, ago. Absolutely, that was the one with the two women that got cancer and everything. Yeah. They really sucked, and nobody came to their to their help. No, so that is just disgusting, and that is not typical of ET behavior. Although with your case, I'm still troubled yeah but uh you know it, it's you know, a side effect but honestly if if i if i if i if i am honest if i hear like the earth alliance and they're bringing out all this negative stuff and all this stuff about how bad what's going on that the alien entities are here and this is what they're doing and everything it feels like they're going after my family i have to say i don't know why but it's just how i kind of feel i kind of resonate with them that's why a lot of times when i'll put comments in the chat I'll literally go ahead and put it up right now. I'll do, uh, let me type this in right now, a uh, uh, flying saucer, and I want to go an alien. Let's go ahead and bring up three aliens, and I'm going to put glasses. I'll show you. I'll put it up on a, and glasses. And I'll put this into the chat. Let me bring it up right now. And it, Is it here? There it is. Flying saucer, the three grays who are usually there, and myself wearing glasses so I fit in. That's how I kind of feel about it. And a lot of people say they're horrible, whatever it is. We don't know what is truly is part of it, but my I have a personal relationship that started at a young age, whether I liked it or not. It changed me for who I am today. I still connect with the consciousness that goes beyond them and it's uh 
they're part of us, whether we like it or not. Yeah, I like it, <laughs> but I haven't been like adversely affected, but I also haven't been healed of any of my maladies. So yeah, F you. Yeah. Now, <laughs> do I have the, do I have the ability to manifest energy and push it into my loved ones? And I've, have I used that for my dogs? Yes, I have. Have I used it on myself? No, because it, I feel it's something that I can do and ma manifest on, but I can't do it to myself. Do I have a lot of these, you know, uh, we want to call, call con consciousness abilities. I call it psychic, but it's but more than that. It, it goes to consciousness because of my connection with them. Maybe. Is it something to do with a prior life? Possibly, because there's a lot of stuff that ties into the ancient uh, Hindu texts and uh and energy centers and everything that goes along with it, possibly. But there's just a big question mark, and I'm not really to throw anybody under the bus because, again, we're dealing with something that's an understanding that we don't have because it's alien to us. Joseph? Greetings, everyone. Uh, Larry, good to see you. Greg, Andy? Um, sure, sir. That was, a, that was an awesome interview. Um, you know, a lot of people kick Stevens and Greer down. I don't agree with everything that he says. Like, I don't agree that all aliens are benevolent and they're here to help us and, and whatnot. Uh, that's probably a little but, foolish to think that way. But if you heard Michael, he said, we don't know. It could be good ones or it could be bad ones out yeah, there. But, yeah. you know, a lot of people give, give him give him a hard time because, uh, oh, he, he's, he's just out to make money. Well, you have to understand. He's a doctor. He was a medical doctor. He gave up his trauma surgeon practice to champion this cause because he felt it was more important. So, you know, if he could kind of recuperate the money that he would have made as a trauma surgeon, then I I, I can understand that. So uh, I don't I don't knock him for that. But, uh, you know, he, he, I think he's a good guy and his heart is in the right place. Uh, Maybe a little misguided from time to time, but I think he's uh Dr. Greer's an all right guy. Not to mention, he's the first guy that 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 had disclosure project back in oh one. Nobody had ever done that before. That was that was probably that was one of the most major things I've ever seen. That's sort of kind of where I jumped on board. Right. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, great conversation and everything. And it's just a matter about where we're gonna take the situation, how we're gonna bring it forward, and how we can figure out a way and i'm just looking at a way can we set our differences aside and can we come together as a community i think we can but it's, some of it is just going to have to leave some of those inflection points that flare people up and say forget about that let's focus on the goal yeah yeah absolutely uh yeah we had a, that was a great uh we had a great show last night with regard what do we cover we covered uh initially we were looking at oh well, we got we got dragged into the balloon scenario everyone's seen that there was another balloon that got taken down off of the atlantic at this point this morning yeah we talk we got we the, yeah. talk, oh I, I, didn't, I didn't hear about that oh yeah there, there was a second one that was taken down this morning i believe was going across over the atlantic that came up from down by uh it was in central america so they had multiple balloons that did, they had launched to go after us did, did they yeah. take that uh, one off the east coast oh, yeah sorry joseph did, did they take that no, one no, down no. at Minnesota? Did they take it down? Oh, yeah, it was shot down this morning. It, it was shot down, yeah. yeah let me that's, see. Not, that's not reached the news here, I don't think, in the UK. Yeah, it should be on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to go yeah, ahead and did, find it because I did see it this morning. Jets take off from, didn't the fighter jets take off from Langley? There was two, what, F-18s or F-22s? Which ones were they? Do you remember? No, I'm not. I, 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 yeah, I've got it up on, on the BBC, the... the British uh, bullshit corporation. Sorry, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's got about the one <laughs> over the Atlantic. But uh, the one we were talking oh. about last night, yeah, that that never even oh, appeared shit. on our news. Okay, we got that. I've got a video of it here. It's getting shot down. Already twenty six thousand views. Let me bring this across here. Maybe I'll be able to show something for the audience. Where in the hell am I? Let's go to desktop window. Oh, not that one. Let's go to desktop zoom. We've still got some kind of chat there. Not exactly right. We'll figure that out in a second. Actually, you know what I'll do is let me just go ahead and grab the window. Let me go to here. Let me go back to our chat. And I'll just bring this up for a split second. Who are we all coming in? Admit LM is coming in. Let me just go ahead and give me a second here to crop LM. this. 
properly. Let's bring it up. And this is actually a good video. I'll, I'll put up here. Let me close down the chat. Too many things on screen at once. Let's go ahead and bring this up. And what I'm going to show you now is actually the balloon. Let me take this casual thing here. Um, off. Let's go ahead and take this, and we're going to watch the balloon going. Turn off the volume so we're not going to get a copyright on it. You're going to see it going, and Casual, this is Photo LLC. Thank you, Casual. Let's take it down here. Again, don't want to get into a copyright issue. Let's take it down, transform it. All right, let's go ahead and watch this. There's a balloon. There is it getting shot. Three, boom. Off in pieces. And there goes the array of all the sensors that were going there. You know, it's a shame they couldn't have brought it down in another way where they could get answer, uh, access to the sensors without them having to fall. It's almost like we need to have someone out there with a big fish net to catch it, like Harry Carey <laughs> at, at uh, White Sox Stadium, drunk as hell, putting his fish net outside of the broadcaster's booth to try and catch the uh, foul balls. I don't know if you guys remember that. That's when I was a kid, but it's something that's there. Either way, there was another one, and rather than waiting and seeing where it's going to go, there it goes. Yeah, Thomas, oh. from what it's saying on the BBC website here, the, uh, it was an F-22 Raptor uh, that took it down with a Sidewinder missile, and it was six, mo six nautical, mo nautical miles off the U.S. coast. Gotcha, gotcha. They're going to show me so an ad. They didn't allow it to actually go over your, your um, coastline. It was shot down over the sea. Well, we've got an article here from Fox News. There we go. Fox, so, well, you know what? I need to put this in a different browser. Otherwise, they're going to show me an ad first. Let me do, go ahead and bring this up. I've got a, a window for everything. There we <laughs> go. Okay, here comes in the other browser from Brave Browser. It does a great job of getting rid of the ads, folks. Let's go ahead and play this now. Let me... Oh, great. It's going to shrink down. Let me get this window to the right size so everybody can see it. Come on, Thomas. Make it happen. I'm doing it on the fly here. Okay, there's the upper left corner of that window going to the lower right corner of that window. And when I press play, it's going to go ahead and play the Fox News video on this. Here we go. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You get, nobody can hear this. <laughs> the audience can't hear it. Nobody can hear it. Let me get in the back room and add. I add a new browser, and guess what? Unless, la, 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 unless I add in <laughs> the sound there, I'm not going to hear it, and I can hear it now. If I go to the audience, let me get to OBS, Chrome, uh, OBS Composite Audio. Let me bring in Brave Browser. And let me go to Meet Audio so you guys can also hear this. Uh, Brave Browser. All right. Let me start this again. Let me get this in here. And everybody should be able to hear it now. Exclusive coverage of this Chinese spy balloon going down there over Surfside Beach, South Carolina. If you could talk to us about what happened in terms of coordinating this to get to this point now, General Keene. Well, we've had all of our sensors watching this, uh, you know, for some time, and certainly our military capability that was going to be involved got alerted. People have been uh, planning it likely for a couple of days. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the president, uh, you know, made a decision uh, within the last 24 hours uh, to take this out. They they probably presented him with a number of options of where the best place to do it, certainly heading to the East Coast, which is considerably more populated than Montana was. It was probably ruled out that they would do anything over land. If they weren't willing to do it over Montana, they're certainly not going to do it uh, on the East Coast of the United States or in transit to the East Coast. And they're taking advantage of, obviously, uh, doing this safely in terms of civilians. And <clears throat> it's not a complicated operation, I don't believe, for the for the United States military to, to take a balloon moving at the speed it's moving at and, and bring it down. So the coordination to do that and the intelligence to, to 
bring all of that together is, is, is not a major problem for us at all. It, now, can we recover the sensor package? That's going to be iffy, uh, given the size of this thing and how much it weighs. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me go ahead and start, stop this. We've got an idea of what's going on. Let me go ahead and shrink this down and this tighter for the time being. Yeah. Interesting situation, to say the least. Uh, let me shrink hey, this. Hey, Thomas, can I uh, jump in real quick? I Please do. In, just because I had noticed, I don't know if you saw, but as we were watching that video, there were several things flying across the screen below the balloon that were flashing on, on and off on the video. Did All you right. see those? No, I didn't. Let me see if I can go find the video of this that I can actually download from Fox News, and we can bring it up and look at it up close. Um, Damn, West, you got the eyes of a hawk. <laughs> I get lucky occasionally. Or I hallucinated it. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see if they've got here. All right. Uh, Chinese shot down over the Atlantic. Let me get a copy to this link address. Let me go ahead and download this. I do stuff on the fly, and I enjoy it. <laughs> Mostly. Paste the link. It, shouldn't, it should be a short clip, so it shouldn't take long to get down. I already downloaded. God, it's nice to have a data connection that actually works for once. Let me go to my downloads. 4K downloader. All right. So I've got the video now locally. Let me go ahead and rebring that up again. So you're saying as it's shot or? No, as it's coming down, um, I, you'll see some like white flashing things flying in from yes. off screen. Yes. Sorry, my dog's um, in the background. I've got the things that you're talking about, the balloon. So they may be from the debris from the balloon, right. but some of them seemed like they were maybe preceding the balloon or even coming in from the side. So, so I, let's oh, take yeah. it. So it was, the video starts with it already being shot, where it's already shot. So I, we can see Unless the objects the that are flying in the sky. It's just kind of hard to see just because of the size of the video and it's 720p. If we try to get in there a wow. little bit larger. But uh, it's not the stuff that you're seeing above it. It's actually below it and coming in. You gotcha. know what that stuff is? It, it, it's debris from the balloon because the balloon is, is, des is, is descending, going down. I see what you mean. And it was shot higher. So W. Decker is saying, there you go. There's the piece that you're talking about right there. That's really yeah, brilliant. Yeah. That if I go back, we have all the different pieces that are there. And now you've got something that's going down and it just sparkles for a second. And it looks like it's flying crosswise to the debris coming down. Maybe I'm just... It was no, such it's not. It's, it's locked to the debris field. I'm just going back forth frame by frame up and down as I move it. You can see yeah, right. it's moved and it's in moving and lock step with the de de debris itself. And plus we're also dealing with camera move. So it's kind of looking, we're seeing it moving a little bit. The camera is moving up and down as it's looking at it. It's not completely locked in yep. place because they are zooming in far. And this is some of the stuff when I'm looking at You're some right. of the, uh, the UFOs, like we've got the video of the one in Malta. You have to look at the object itself as the camera is moving down to where is that piece locked to, and it's going to tell you how close or how far the object is. Play it a little bit further at speed, if you wouldn't mind, because I thought I saw something else. There's another one I'm... off to the right side that does the same kind of a flash right there. It's right over here. Yeah, that's is. probably what I saw. Yeah. Okay, thank you for looking. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it comes down to looking at the... Uh, and there's another flash... That happens you can't see it it's at the very bottom of the screen right down over here as well so you know it could be objects as they're coming down they're picking up light and sparkling from it yep there's another flash the the original impact trajectory was on a horizontal from the sidewinder supposedly so the the original blast is gonna have shot that stuff on a horizontal trajectory before it started falling so that's why it's scattering as far as it is on a horizontal spread below it when it's falling yeah that makes good sense very interesting to say the least you know you know okay so talking about last night's show we get we get dragged into the balloon piece 
And then we had a pres- presentation from Arl we were going to go ahead and cover. We got into the first three or four lines of it. Larry and I are both ripping it apart <laughs> from our different perspectives of how the government isn't telling us the truth. And then Wes popped up and said, hey, what about talking about a UFO Jesus? Now, although the audience did vote for us, interesting, the audience started to decline when we went down that way. So we just have to make sure if we're going towards it, we can get it. But yeah, um, interesting to see what uh, he had to say. And it's something we definitely need to follow up on and have more of an extended time to go ahead and watch that. Well, uh, my, my point of bringing up UFO, UFO Jesus last night was really more to back up what Larry was saying which is uh, and, and something that the point that UFO Jesus made in that interview was that the longer the government keeps playing this silly game with us, the worse it's going to be for them when they finally have to deal with the fact that they're probably yep. to be disclosed without them. And if they want to do the right thing, they should come out and admit it now and save themselves a lot worse trouble by trying to just dress up and own up and apologize. Yeah. Yeah. West, I, I watched that interview last night and I have to tell you, I did resonate with these concepts and I think he made some great points. I didn't like the way he got there because yeah. uh, what I, I guess I don't like about this guy is that he just keeps putting all these disclaimers. I could be wrong. No, I, no, I, the government might be right. Oh, I, and then he, but then you know, he puts all that out there, and you got to get past that because once you get into what he really believes, it starts coming out with passion. Yeah, and uh, I, I really agreed with uh, the idea that, uh, or I really hope he's right about if this is an engine, if this is an engineered um, process that the ETs are doing, where they're they're baiting the government into lying their ass off, right? And then when they get caught. They're just, they're going to have absolutely zero credibility. They're all their asses are going to get fired and we're going to start over again. Yeah. Oh, Andy. Yeah. I, I, I just want to go back to that. I made a comment on it a bit earlier. Um, when I, when I first joined in, um, Larry, um, to be honest, I, I think you need to totally ignore his disclaimers. He's, he's covering his own backside. Um, but as I, he doesn't I, I need watch- to. He doesn't need to no, but it, it might be a, an inherent thing with him personally. Yeah. Um, but definitely, I, I I watched his his interview earlier on today, and to be honest with you, I resonated with the guy quite an awful lot. Yeah. To be honest, um, again, as I said, I I don't have the I'm not skewed by the the Stephen Greer him because this is the only channel I actually take part in. And 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 I might watch the odd interview if it pops up, but I tend to gravitate towards this channel. Um, so I, I'm not skewed by by everything else that's gone on, and it really resonated with me what he was what he had to say. I thought it was quite apt, and and he was very coherent, and he was very um, uh, what is the other word? He, he he captivated me to be honest. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm quite willing to see. I I I won't even. I don't even take to mind his his where he's putting disclaimers out. I I want to. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear what the guy has to actually physically say, as I like hearing what you have to say and and everybody else, who has anything to say in this channel. Um, and he really, really, yeah, it, it struck a real chord. And I, if if you like him, if you don't, his. As with everybody who's in this field, at some point or another, their heart's in the right place. It's kind of like politics, really. I think a politician doesn't go into politics to get rich. They go into things with the right, with their hearts in the right places. And I think by being drawn into where they, they eventually end up, it skews their way of thinking. And that's the problem we have with, with this subject. And as where Thomas says, it's it's about getting everybody's opinion and, and finding a way that everybody can actually interact as we do on here. We've all got our own personal opinions. You, Larry, might like somebody. I might actually watch them and think, I really like that person. But as as Thomas says, you know, opinions are like assholes. You know, everybody's got one. 
we, we, we can agree to disagree. That actually comes from my dad. He needs credit for that one, but it's true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely true. We, we all have our own opinions of, of everything by our own um, personal way we've been brought up or, or our life experiences. And, and I think it's finding that common ground that we, we're all here for the same subject. We are all here to find the what the hell is going on with all these things we've experienced or seen or abductees and everything. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to shut my mic off now, but because um, Larry wants to speak and uh, um, LM have got things to say. But yeah, I, I really, with UFO Jesus, it resonated an awful lot. And I thought he had some really valid points. Yeah. Absolutely. LM, you've got your hand up next in order. Um, I just wanted to, you guys are hitting it right on the nose. That's what we're trying to do. And of course, other people are going to have all kinds of ideas about what's going on. Um, and it's not many of them. I think we can identify really fast, of uh, which those people are the ones that are trying to um, just seeking to be right. This isn't, this isn't a topic where somebody has to be the first one to be right um it's about all of us and so thinking outside of the box is exactly what we need to be thinking and you don't have to agree with everybody's opinions like i'm the only time i get turned off by somebody is if if they're withholding information or if i see some activity out of them through corporate involvement government involvement where they're singing a certain tune and then they back off of it and all of a sudden their tone or their message changes that makes me suspect um, because ultimately, I welcome everybody's opinion. I really do, as long as we're all in the spirit and nature of seeking the truth, whatever that may be. Right. Good way to look at it. Absolutely. Uh, Larry? Yeah, I, I agree, Ellen. Yeah, I, I, when, if someone's lying, that's, uh, that's that's a big red flag. Of course, you got to stop listening to them. If you sense that they're working with, that they have an agenda, yeah, you can't listen. But back to the interview, I just had a question, Thomas, and maybe West, um, if you could help me, because uh, I heard him say in the earlier part of the interview that um, you know if if the government would have uh, not interfered, we would have been. Um, poverty would have been eliminated and so it sounds like he's talking yeah. about technology that 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 came from the ets would have fixed everything for us now later he said there will be no technological solution and and we need to do it ourselves or something like that i i heard there will be no technical solution uh no no uh what did he mean by that do you know i don't um greg do you have, is Greg still here? Or did he take off? I know Greg was part of the conversation as well. No, Greg booked off. I'm not sure. Um, well, it, well, I guess there's no tech, a technical solution based on what we're dealing with with our technology today. Maybe it's coming out of the fact that we don't have this technology, and if we can change our ways and use and leverage what is available to us, maybe through and the higher level of consciousness from the ETs, that it can let us change a lot of our ways. Maybe it's, you know, different, yeah, I, you know, I, what he was almost describing was like different ways for us to generate and use energy. No, I think you hit it there. I, it just popped. Uh, I think he was talking about in our current state of, of consciousness and our current uh, attitudes and everything, the tech, you can't just throw technology at it to fix it. We have to come together. We have to, our hearts have to come together. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think that a great step forward would be if we could finally realize that we fell for it. We like, like uh, uh, Ryan said, uh, a UFO, UFO G's in his interview, he said, you know, they lied to us and we fell for it. Yeah. So, um, you know. Uh, but it we, wasn't just lying. Did... It was really an orchestrated 
operation like Project Mockingbird, where it was using social engineering back at the time and even today, and whatever they could possibly do to go ahead and take any information that was real and what whatever it was and disqualify it, make it sound like it's coming from a bunch of crazy kooks versus a reality that's happening around all of us today. And it became so pervasive. Even look how long it had been that uh, back in the day that, you know, for the last... 70 years, 75, you know, 70 years plus, airline pilots have not been able to come out and talk about this for fear from reprisal from their employers and uh, ridicule and criticism from their peers if they saw something and they wanted to report it. It was, you know, it was kind of like in the, uh, what was it, Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the movie when it's opening and there's a, actually after it opened, there was a scene where there was some commercial airliners very relevant to what we're dealing with today to where they were encountering with it was a nearby miss on the plane and they were like do you want to report a ufo in this plane silence i said hey plane do you want to report a ufo no i don't then he asked the other plane do you want to report a ufo silence and then a stern voice coming back saying no i don't you know they want to but the reality of where our it's uh, the rules of our society that were put in place to keep people from uh, not now uh, to keep people from going and being a part of it. Shelly, not now. We've got a bunch of people in the back, and I need to keep this on track today. Uh, go ahead, Joseph. You're saying? Uh, no, I just want to say, uh, uh, where's all the where's all the female? I mean, Flor Ma Florence came in earlier. Well, well, Shelly just came in, females? and I thought we had enough people. I said, if, Shelley, if you want to have Shelly come in, she can come in, but it can get a bit messy at times. Ah, uh, well, gotta have that female perspective, you know. It's like going to a party. It's like where's all the where's all the females? Yeah, <laughs> it's a sausage mess. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with a bunch Not that of. I mind, but you know, <laughs> we're dealing with a bunch of old white guys at this point. <laughs> I hate to say it. <laughs> Hey, speak for yourself. Hey, yeah, I am yeah. a minority. I am gay, and I'm proud of it. So at least I'm in some kind of minority. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still young, thank you. I'm in a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm in a bunch of minorities. Yes. I don't fit in anywhere except here. Yeah. I'm just a misfit. <laughs> Why am I just a misfit? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I fit in? Yeah, I, that's oh, another great song yeah. from the days. Exactly. Uh, we just have to find Let where we just... can. Go ahead, Larry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just going to say about Greer. I have to say that I have deep respect for Stephen Greer. Yeah. So I, I hope uh, hope you guys understand that. Oh, yeah. I, I really do. I think he made a mistake on the, uh, the abduction things being uh, all uh government military I, I mean that's ridiculous you think about um like they were talking you were talking about in this interview like a knee or he was uh, michael uh about a, a knitting needle being put into the oh no that was that I, I brought that up you, yeah, yeah i brought that up so, that's someone and, whose name i shouldn't say who's uh part of a national aviation organization's effort to bring forward information the truth about uh, UFOs, and it's not Ryan Graves, but he's had several encounters, whether he's liked it or not. And it, you know, he went through severe PTSD for a good por a portion of his life for some of the stuff that he had went through, just because it was so dramatic to his life. Damn. I mean, literally, yeah. he was consciousness uh, yeah. and awake. He couldn't move. There was a hand that came down over his face held it there where yeah. it came in and took this thing and pushed it up around the eye. He heard the crunch going in the back of his skull as it was going, being pushed in. And there was pain? I believe so, yes. And he couldn't move. He felt everything. Yeah, I mean, that's that's hideous. But I know. first of all, the government, the government can't do that. They don't have, like, technology to do that. No. Okay. So, you don't, I mean, you don't know that? Well, I don't know that. Um, I'm not going to subscribe that we don't, because if we did, they'd be using it on a regular basis. Just my thought pattern, at least. It's, yeah, it's just, it just doesn't make sense to me that the government, why, would the, why the hell would they be abducting people? I, I just don't get that. And besides that, when you look at all the abduction and experiences, they're, they're experiencing things that the government would not be able to recreate. Um, so... 
So that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But that's but again, back to Greer. He is he has done more for this field than anyone else, including Lou Elizondo. So that's my opinion. Yeah, he brought a lot of people into this before Lou was around, and he kind of felt like he was the person who was going to be the person leading this. And he could see that there was almost like a cat fight between two cheerleaders over one of the football players. Yeah, he's sleeping. Yeah. He's sleeping with both of them, but they're going to go at each other to keep the other one away. And it's just kind of yeah. you know, um, everyone sees things differently. Again, it's to if we can focus away, you know, look beyond the things that were different and what you kind of resonated on Larry was the number of people that Steven has connected with, with his movies. It's, it's a powerful media to, for us to get with people. And I guess, uh, talking about people, I wish that they were doing something a little bit more vocal about it. Steven Spielberg has got another, uh, video series. I think it's going to be for HBO or Netflix that he's putting together. I heard this through David Altman brought it up on, on a live stream in the past that that's all we know about, that there is something that, well, Dave's involved in that he's wanted to get going for a long period of time, but it's happening. So some of the old guard who have been instrumental in opening our eyes to the situation are coming back again, because the truth is we, we need these important storytellers. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, where else are we today? Let's see what else is going on. So, um, you know, 2023 is here. We're in February. And what I've been seeing coming out of Disclosure so far this year is we keep on getting little blips of information that come out for what's going on, and then it goes silent. And we're in one of those periods of time again where yeah. there may be things going on, but there's just not a lot of stuff going on. Joseph, you actually have your hand up. Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter. Uh, ooh, yeah, ooh, uh, you know ooh. what? I was sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was thinking, uh, sitting here. Uh, these balloons that have been that, that been invading our airspace. I'm wondering if they're really Chinese or not, or if they belong to us and they're just shooting. No, them they're they're not so ours. <laughs> but here's the thing. When there is something big in the air and the media talks about it, there are tons of people that come out with cameras. And even before the media talks about it and the media is showing it, there are people who are going out there with their phones, with their cameras, zooming up and seeing it. So what we really need is a good old fashioned, big old sighting, you know, come on, guys, show yourselves. Let's get out there because... Yeah. The, the the citizens of the of the world are trained enough and they we have enough there's enough pervasive technology out there like remember when we had that stuff going off of San Diego that you could see from Taiwan I mean Tijuana and oh god right that you could see down from Mexico in different places and it turned out that was our military going out there and doing operations dropping flares but there were you know countless videos of people capturing it with video and capturing it with photos that we just need a good old you know good old let's go ahead and show yourself and i think people are going to there should be enough evidence coming from enough people to where everyone's going to acknowledge something's up there but the thing is do you think we're really going to need the federal government to weigh in and say oh it's not ours oh it's somebody else's or are we going to be able to see something recognize it like a giant floating pyramid <laughs> or something big to really just, I think that would be the most instrumental piece. Forget a flying saucer. Let's get a giant floating pyramid out there because a, it's oh, a yeah. pyramid B it lines up with so much of our ancient history where people are just going to see it and they're going to recognize it and say, Oh my gosh, it really is. It was them back then, you know, to give us that link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. LM. Yeah. Thank you. What I've noticed, you talked about, Sorry, you talked about 2023 and what we've seen from disclosure so far. We've seen punch and counterpunch. That's what we've seen. And we're going to continue yeah. to see that through 2023. Um, you're going to see you're going to see information that comes out and then you're going to see the counterpunch by the United States military industrial complex. And I think what Lou Elizondo was talking about, the brilliance of that people will realize is, is that by establishing this, everybody wants to know why there was this threat narrative put in. By establishing a threat narrative, 
you're taking some of the blow out of that counter punch from the MIC. That you want. Because ultimately, ultimately the reason, the reason why you're, why that is, is because one, it forces them if it's a threat narrative to investigate. And in the meantime, while there's UAP sightings happening, they're going to have to investigate those two and put that in the threat narrative bucket. So then they're going to have to start explaining because they're real quick to say, oh, this is a Chinese balloon or, oh, these are Chinese drones. Well, that's all good and great. The public is only going to tolerate the identified objects for so long. I've got to take Cupcake out. You got the floor, guys. Continue on. So as the mounting numbers of UAPs that are unidentified continue to grow, which we did see in this 2022 NDA, the numbers growing were huge. It'll continue to happen over the next couple of years. And when they don't investigate those and, and disclose what they are to the public, it will, it will basically make the military industrial complex, the Air Force, Space Force, they're going to lean on the fact that it is their job to protect the United States from threats, from adversaries. And when they don't address these, it is going to render them inept so that well, so it's boxing it's boxing yeah. them in a corner yeah except they're already not acknowledging them and not investigating them we just so, don't have enough we just don't have as the numbers continue to mount and as they okay. keep taking their wins with oh it's a chinese balloon oh it's a chinese drone the losses of being able to identify are going to greatly outweigh what they can identify and at right. some point, at some point, it's going to make them look inept. And I believe that is like the anaconda squeeze strategy that Lou, Lou Elizondo yeah. and that group has brought to the table. I think you're right. And that was a major step for ufology, what uh, Elizondo did with the legislation and all that. Yes. And I just think it's going to take time. We've got to get these numbers continuing to climb of unidentifieds. And it's going to be like an anaconda squeezing the United States military and vessel complex to at some point yeah. they're going to have to address them. They're so. going to have to, or else it's going to render them mm -hmm. as inefficient to defend our best interests. True. Oh, I hope so. We need, we need something, you know, Thomas was just saying that um, maybe we need a good old fashioned major mass sighting. And I, I keep coming back to that. Like, yeah, that would really do it. Um, but we're not getting that yet. Uh, that's not their plan, apparently. It's very gradual, it seems, but it's picking up. Well, I just things like racetrack. I hope like that things people, like those. I hope people will go outside and see it with their own eyes. I mean, you remember Phoenix Lights, right? Oh yeah. Okay. You think that would have moved the needle a lot, and it did within our community, but it did not with the general public. That was a so pretty big deal say. for that time. That was a big deal. That was a lot of stuff going on over a major metro area. And we have Mr. Mr. Phoenix Lights himself here in, in our community. Tom King is the one of the ones that is responsible for filming that and getting it out to the world. Right. And, and it made a huge impact in our community, but it didn't really dent public perception worldwide or globally that much. That's because they no. tried to explain it away. <laughs> right. They brought in yeah. the damn alien costume in the meeting with the freaking mayor. And you saw how quickly that unraveled and turned into a freaking joke that that I don't, I don't think's that, funny. I don't think it's funny. You know what I mean? It's not no, funny. No, no, it's, no, it wasn't. It's not funny at all. But he's he's also contrite about what he did because the truth is that he went out uh and and when he had heard about it and he actually saw this thing. And so he, he, he had a change of heart later uh, and came back and said, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry I did that. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Um, if you, yeah, I'm with you, Larry. Oh, Last landing might be necessary, but we're going to need, we're going to need like Independence Day shit. Pardon my French. Um, we're going we're gonna to need like, jump in, guys. we're going to need like the 24 largest metros of the, of the world having sightings right. in coordination simultaneously. Real quick, just because I think this is really relevant, um, Tom King just chimed in and said that's because there was a media blackout. Can I jump in, right. a minute, guys? Um, sorry, Go ahead. Thomas, you, you. Um, 
I'm 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 gonna link this to this balloon sighting, okay? The the Phoenix Lights, which I never saw obviously because I'm in the UK, but uh, I believe were real, okay? And I believe believe what Tom King was saying is he's, he's out in chat at the moment. But I think actually this balloon sighting may do our subject an awful lot of good. Um because it's a a I'll say it as a semi-known object. It is known that it is a balloon that's come over from China. People now are going to be going out and looking up in the skies, and I think we will get a heck of a lot more sightings. I'm hopeful we'll get a heck of a lot more sightings by people going out to see if they can see if any more balloons are coming over. Whereas with, with, with the Phoenix Lights, it was a UFO. Okay, and so... Uh, it was a UFO that was sighted by an awful lot of people. Tom King, hi. Uh, you, you haven't been on uh, in the studio for ages, but I know you're out in chat tonight. Yeah, um, it was, and, and it wasn't and a many other people. Andy, it was, it was an orchestration. Oh, oh, definitely. But what I'm saying is, with this known object now that has, has been in your news and our news over in the UK, it's hit the, it's hit the UK news, you know, uh, about this happening and everything. People are now, I think, going to be going up to see if they can see these balloons. And I think there'll be a lot more sightings reported of, of unidentified objects. And here's the thing, Andy, really quick. We actually ha now have a balloon incident that we can actually refer to and say, does it look, this is what a balloon looks like. This is what a balloon yeah. does. What we're seeing is not a balloon. So screw you, Mick Good West. Point. Yeah, I, I think it's really, really going to help the subject. I, I, I do, um, because you are, you, you've got, you can talk to people about this on the street. Whereas, would you walk up to somebody and talk about UFOs to them on the street? In all reality, you can walk up to them and talk about the balloon. Did you see the balloon? Did you, did you get a sight in of it? Uh, you know, and uh, no, but I saw something that looked a bit like a balloon, but it wasn't. Oh, really? And then it opens up a whole new way of a whole new conversation rather amongst a wider public. And if it is a balloon, we're getting fighters coming in and intercepting it and knocking out of the air. Right. We're getting people from the Pentagon, generals from the Pentagon, getting on camera, talking about it and everything else. And if we run into a situation where there is something big and it's all silence from the government, then you know what it is. It's something that we don't want to talk about. We can't. It's a matter of national security. So we can't even, you know. You oh, get, I agree. That, oh, I agree that. totally. I agree totally, Thomas, because now you have a situation if there's a UAP that's that's sighted that that decides to, you know, scuttle across the United States for you know, 3000 miles, then you, then everybody's going to be like, okay, if it's a balloon, then why aren't you scrambling jets to go shoot it down? Exactly. You, spoke, you, you took the words out of my mouth there, Lee. Uh, really, really. Yeah. If, if it's an unidentified, if, if it's a, a true unidentified, they're not going to be jets flying up to see this thing. So it's right. bang. Right. Yeah. So they can't say it's a balloon. And I think somebody was speaking to that last night. Like you can't at that point, you can't say it's a balloon because they just they just set a precedent right now. They set a precedent that the next balloon that comes over, you got to shoot that one down, too, because we can't be having this. It's a threat to national security. So when we get a funny flashing orb that shoots around and moves really fast and you don't scramble jets and it travels, you know, a couple you know 100 100 miles 200 miles are we tracking it where is it people need to look at it and then be like what was that oh you know i mean was it a balloon like do you have your sensors on it is it another one of those balloons if it was why didn't you scramble and shoot it down um oh it disappeared well that doesn't sound like a balloon does it you know did you pick it back up and it, like again putting them in the corner this is part of what lou was talking about putting them in the corner to where we all know they're going to sit there and try to deny and deny. But once you paint them in the corner, it gets really hard for them to be able to even move out of it. Right. This it does. come in a, a perfect time for us. You know, oh. we, you, you're saying that... that we're, Guys, we're, hold we're on. Pause for one second. I need to go back and do a cleanup from 
the call we had just going on. I just need to double check here. I need to make sure. Give me a second here, folks. I just need to go in here really quick and fix something that I'm just, hey, I don't have properties, save, shut down browser. I need to go into Greg's really quick here and take care of that. Hold on. Almost there, folks. Give me one second, please. Uh, I just need to go into Greg's. I need to get rid of the ca this camera that is staying running. Well, I guess it's there. It's not there. Oh, well, let's go back to it. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. Continue. That's okay. Uh, if, I, if I can continue, we're, we're in this continuous peak and trough of, of information coming out. We had all that wonderful information come out from Lou, and then he went silent because of all the crap that went on. Then it goes up a little bit. We hear a bit more news. It comes down. I, I think, as we were saying at the beginning of the year, we, we, we had that crap shoot of a, of a report come out two months late and was a complete waste of paper, basically. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but now, again, I, I, I really think this, this balloon is going, is going to be a massive help to, to our, our community. I really do. Um, we don't know what it is. Is it an air weather balloon? Is it a spy balloon? It seems that it was able to to, hop, to loiter over a monstrum for a couple of days. To me, as a, as a layman, as, as, as a non-military person who's got no true idea of these balloons, I, I thought a balloon, if it's in the wind, it blows and it, it goes as far as the wind takes it until it comes down. It, a balloon doesn't loiter um but i'm 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 100 percent sure something good will come out of this yeah lee so there's another element to this before we think it's all conspiracy um china was reporting that it was a civilian weather balloon gathering data which there's international laws about what is allowed and what's not allowed okay let's not get confused we fly things over other countries too okay including balloons we do um so this became a legal framework and when china announced that it was a civilian weather balloon we had to find a reason to be able to shoot it down whether now we can argue up and down whether or not they wanted to shoot it down or not the reason they shot it down is important to where they shot it down they found a reason that was justified by faa law to shoot it down within the corridor that they shot it down because it was a risk mm -hmm. to federal aviation okay that's why they grounded all the planes and that's why they shot it down where they did. That's that. Ha and, and I'm telling you, that's part of the reason that they waited for it to go where it went. Um, they were always going to shoot it down, but they were working through the legal hash, you know, the hash basically to be able to justify shooting down what China claimed was a civilian weather balloon. As soon as it got into a very high traffic area because it's not just those airports that that corridor runs multi-dimensional uh, multi-directional as far as air traffic it's, it's the one of the most busiest corridors there is in the united states for air traffic for both domestic and international flights all right so as soon as it entered that airspace they were able to say it's a threat to the airspace it doesn't matter that it's a weather balloon we have to bring it down right well, it's a threat to the airspace because potentially if it's flying within the corridors where actually our jets are going, didn't it actually even go ahead and ground some some airports in Montana from actually allowing flights to take off? Yesterday, I believe it did. I believe that's correct, Thomas. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I think we yes, also... and we were still waiting on confirmation from China to, for them to tell us what it was. Well, and I think the other thing we probably should look at is the slightly bigger context of the fact that our Secretary of State was getting ready to fly to China for negotiations. So this was a very convenient uh, excuse for him to cancel his trip. Yes, of course. There's so yes, yeah, so there's so many different layers here to what's going on. I just don't want people to automatically be pissed. Like, why did they wait so long and do this? Because there's just so many other there's so many other facets to what they're doing. Yeah, but it also came down to uh, being backed up underneath the president making a decision. And as of yesterday, the president didn't want to shoot it down, and he wanted to let it continue to go on. And, you know, uh, not until, what was it, later on that we actually 
did go ahead and shoot these things down, and we probably should have uh, respected our airspace sooner. You know, uh, if we talk about the capabilities of the Air Force and the Space Force, they can see everything from ground level up to beyond the moon. So when this balloon got launched, guaranteed it was showing up on their systems, and they tracked it moving across, coming towards our airspace, and rather than doing something proactive as soon as it came in and taking it out, they let it go, and they let it go, and someone could make a decision, and it waited too long, and finally, the decision was made, and we took it out. And we you know, stood up for the way the United States would. Now, what do you think China would do if we launched a balloon from over in Europe or somewhere, or even in India, and that balloon went up and started going over China? Do you think they would have let it loiter over their country for so long and not do anything about it? Heck no. Well, and Thomas, to your point, we know that they tracked it from its launch point because they were able to tell us exactly when and where it launched. So, Right. They also said that they started taking um, security measures for our infrastructure and our data systems whenever it hit the Aleutian Islands. So they they knew. They knew it was coming. Like the Aleutian Islands, like, they're like it blew off course. It was inadvertent. Well, that's interesting. Okay, whatever. Like again, we're getting we're getting caught in the minutia of this. The point, is, and and kind of back to your Biden point, and this is just my own bias, guys. So don't get get you know, please you, you can get mad at me if you want. Um, I personally don't think that our president is going to be calling the shots on anything. I don't think he has been the entire time he's been in office. Um, uh -uh. So I don't think him saying we should shoot it down um, actually has any input into the situation just kind of like where i mean we can laugh about things but kind of like where trump wanted to you know brought up the question of well can we just nuke the hurricane do you think anybody took that seriously so what that biden said let's shoot it down trump said let's nuke a hurricane it's yeah there, there's a lot of stupid things people I mean, in office say no matter what is i mean honestly a lot of things were trump that he'd say was kind of all right some of it was like oh my god it's like that uncle that you have yeah. at a party that you can shut up and is <laughs> is like my grandmother would say stop talking like a sausage <laughs> but people need to realize that the president isn't this system is designed like we all know this, like uh, Nor NORCOM and SOCOM are designed so that if all of Congress was taken out, that they still operate. That's okay. So this tells you that they are the overriding decision makers at any, at any point that it's declared so. So just because Biden said, you know, I want to shoot it down, he's not the final authority. The president doesn't have the final authority. It, it's just people are disenchanted. Actually, yes, they do. It usually has to come down to the president going ahead and giving the go-ahead to go ahead and make an operation handle. So in some of these things, it does come down for the president to make that decision. And I just, just like I when you had I Obama believe... going on when they took out bin Laden, he was the one in, 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 the, in the call. I mean, he was in the conference room and he was the one and told him as he was watching the action going on, go ahead, take him out. And, and Thomas, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I think it's circumstantial. I think it really matters who is in the pilot seat. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's true. Hey, Thomas. Yes, sir. Uh, or, or guys, that balloon that was shot down off the eastern seaboard of, of the U.S., uh, is it true that, I mean, if I heard it correctly, it was maneuvering up the eastern seaboard? It can't maneuver. It yeah, was. It, it looks. Like, it looks like like underneath. It looks like underneath it. It had. It had a solar panel. No, the, not. So I, 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 we covered this last night. Those aren't solar panels, Joseph. If they were solar panels, they'd be on the top of the balloon. What you're dealing with was a was a highly uh, a sensitive sensor array array that was trying to pick uh, up information okay, from what was going on down below. And in the center of that sensor array. There, there was a big circular area, what looked like it could have been a camera as well. Now, I, I was just wondering, how in the hell is this thing able to maneuver the way it's maneuvering? It can't. It, 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 yeah, it, it, that's a great question. It's a great question. Okay, because the, 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 the prevalent winds are from west to east, you know, going out over the ocean. So, and this thing is like maneuvering. Uh, it's not maneuvering. It's, it's, it's stuck in the jet, in the jet stream. I mean, based on it, guys, it blew west to east. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. unless the winds at, at the time off the eastern seaboard were going up, up the eastern seaboard, I, I, I guess that's it. 
it depends on what i mean and you got to remember too the winds go different directions at different levels right so right right on where where it was in its uh, altitude that could affect how it was being moved yeah but it right. takes a lot of power to fight the winds with that much <laughs> oh uh, yeah there. all right Let's take and bring up and a globe here in your place for a second, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the winds and what we're dealing with on the east coast of the United States. Now I believe we're down at surface. Hold on, you can see where it's kind of going. Let's go up to a thousand feet. <laughs> let's go to ten. Let's go to higher. So you can get get you an idea of where some. And if something gets stuck in a pressure system and goes around, it's going to be at the mercy of the winds. And you can see there's another uh, a, a little bit higher. And let's go even a little bit higher. And let's go even a little bit higher. So basically, once you take your balloon and you're going to throw it up there, it's going to go ahead and go from the West Coast, dip down or whatever it is, go up and around and come around yeah. and then go back up again. And it's and you basically have this circuit and it's, it's that not goes around the entire planet. It's not just a matter of east to west as well. It it once you get to a certain altitude, it can get sucked up even higher into the jet right. stream and above it. So right, there's there, right. there's a there's a there's a hor there's a horizontal and there's also a vertical axis at play too. Yeah, of course. Now, if you were a clever gotcha. operator, you might be able to drop the altitude of the balloon and then repressurize it to make it go up in order to catch the winds that you wanted to try to maneuver it a little bit. That's a possibility. This and, and this yeah, where yeah. I'm at right now yeah. is is probably where it's at, um, where you can see it went up north around the Aleutian Islands, came down, down into the United States over in here, and then start would have been eventually shooting up the seaboard and eventually heading back towards China. So, so 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 Wes brings up a really good point. We shouldn't think of this thing having like a propeller or a fan on it or no. some kind of weird propulsion that steers it. Think of it in terms of a sailboat out on the ocean. You 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 adjust your sails so that it catches the already steering wind so that you ride that current. But you're here you're and dealing with a spherical object that doesn't have a sail. Correct, but at the same time West brought up a really good point. You can you can you can inflate or deflate the balloon for an altitude so that it catches different streams to go. If they had the ability to have in, in deflate it, and if they would, de would deflate it, there's no way to reinflate it with the material to push it back higher again. Sure there is. You just yeah. have canisters yeah. that you carry on board with uh, compressed gas. Right. Which could have been inside, which could have been anywhere on that thing. We don't know. Um, I wanted to, well, I wanted yeah. to hey, ask hey, another guys. question. I wanted to ask another question for our panel and audience. Does anybody have video that shows clarity enough that shows a sidewinder or a missile uh, projectile hitting it? Yes, I've seen it on Twitter. Um, there were a couple of different shots where you can see the jet and the missile leaving the jet and then the jet flying by as it uh, deflates okay. and falls. I haven't I haven't seen that yet. That's why I was asking because I was kind of hoping, but I knew they wouldn't. I was kind of hoping they'd use some of that laser laser tech that they have instead of like a projectile. But anyway, that's I mean that kind of jokingly, but of course they wouldn't use anything super high tech. Well, I was kind of surprised they didn't just use, you know, bullets. <laughs> but hey guys, yeah. uh it seems how this thing was shot off the eastern seaboard of the US. Wouldn't that be indicative that it traveled all across the continental, There's, the continental United States, or weren't there two unless, balloons, or, or unless unless it was it was launched from a, a Japanese sub. Yeah, they saw where it took off, Joseph. They they know exactly where it took off and went into the atmosphere. I mean, I think we're going down a, a really dangerous hole of speculation of trying to figure out what it could be. We have an idea where we they know where it was launched in China. It's a balloon that had a sensor array on the bottom and has been basically following along the jet stream and winds aloft. I think it's relevant. Oh, so it, it, I think it tra it's relevant, it traveled though. all the way. One at a time, guys. All... Go ahead, Joseph. Did it travel all the way across the U.S.? I, in other words, were, were, they were they tracking it? I Well, this is a show that usually focuses on aliens, so I haven't been focusing on where the balloon goes. All, all we know is question, it's Joseph, a balloon. It came in um, from Canada. So they oh, called the jet okay. stream from Canada, came in around Montana, gotcha. and then flew okay. off. But this is relevant because they they have claimed that the drones that were spotted out off Catalina that swarmed the ships, that they don't necessarily know 
the origin. That's the public. The, well, point. here's the thing. They know it didn't come from the uh, the Japanese. I mean, the Chinese freighter that was there. All of the drones came from the West. My guess would be is they know the origin point about it. However, it could have been some of these things that were there that were not drones actually came up out of the water and then went towards the craft. So what happened on the U.S. West Coast with regards to the USS Russell, that's not completely solved yet. We're still dealing with, yeah, some of them could have been drones, but other ones that we saw, they know they weren't. One of but, the they, but it proves they can still go back through the satellite data and trace back point of origin. They can go back to their radar data and trace it back of the origin. Right. And I think that was one of the really interesting things about the um, Corbell and Knapp uh, interview with, um, they actually had a audio um, interview with one of the radar operators and they had actually yep. traced those objects to that tanker thinking, aha, we finally found where they came from. I think because they were annoying because this, this event happened over a course of three different days at least and over a range of 100 miles. And like Thomas said, they came in from the west and then departed at different directions. So they never could really figure out where right. they were fully coming And everything from. with a drone is usually it'll come in, go to a spot, do its stuff, and then go back to its source. These didn't. Exactly. And what they determined is that, yes, while they did go and uh, surround that tanker for a bit of time, they never landed. They were actually checking out the tanker the same way they were checking out the Navy ships. And it was a source of frustration for the, the Navy guys because they were hoping they could find a yeah explanation, and that turned out not to be it. Yeah, and this is the technical minutia that this is the technical minutia that we actually need to kind of paint them in the corner with because yeah. because they've already proven that they can track a damn balloon from its origin all the way from China to the United States and across the United the entire United States. <laughs> and it down. Well, and good I think point. What, I think what the the probably the answer is just like thomas said in fact we know that it is somewhat the answer because part of that same incident is the video footage that corbell released at one point that shows one of them splashing down into the water so i think we actually have a good indication that these things did in some cases go into the water as their destination yeah, yeah, love yeah. cupcake yeah, sure. Ear is bothering her, and I just went in there to clean it out, and boy, it's got some gunk Aww. in there. So I'm going to have to do the dirty and clean that out and everything. She's just been coming by me during the show. I usually give her a bit more attention than I have to today, and I'm being a bad dad. Aww. Great conversation for everybody, but it's been a great show, a heated conversation about a balloon. <laughs> and hopefully we can <laughs> learn from this and start pointing out things that actually aren't and we'll say, hey, it's not a balloon. Here, If you want to see a balloon, here's a video of it. And we can take it from that particular perspective. Yep. Hey, and for next time, uh, I don't know if you all caught it, but Tom DeLong released a very interesting video that you might check Twitter out for and see what you all think. When did he release it? Thanks, Wes. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it was this afternoon. Um, uh, I <sighs> think, hold on a second. Mike? Colin Negolo on uh, Twitter has posted some good uh, footage of it because DeLong posted it on Instagram. Oh, interesting. We'll have to go ahead and grab that for another show. Audience has yeah. kind of faded away at this point. And on that note, it's a good way for us to go ahead and say, wow, what a great show today. Holy cow. I had no idea. You know, uh, uh, great conversation with Michael Mazzola. My, again, my thanks for him coming out here today. But more importantly, uh, uh, I want to thank the, the people of the audience for the wonderful support and everything we've had come in today. As usual, we've got a, a lot of people just throwing out their love. It was great to see uh, Mom Florence Tracy, and their her granddaughter was there, and she was all dressed up, and she wanted to be on the show, but it was a bit different than usual today. So I uh, apologize that, and hopefully next week we'll have that opportunity. Remember, if, you, if you're still around, you've had a good time, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you think not, go ahead and give us a thumbs down. And if you're going to do so, at least tell us down in the comments. We'll try and get back to you and do what we can do to try and make things better. As you know, we, we try to do the best as we possibly can on this show. And that's all we can do. We're just human. And on that note, I want to, let's see if I can find, I've got, wait, I need to go to this list here. 
Oh, get it off in the beginning. Had a gr- lot, a lot of great super chats coming in today. Just really uh, taken back by all the love and support that comes in from our audience. And I didn't get out to do what I usually did today, just because I wanted to respect our 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 visitor we had in today. And coming out, I want to thank for the super chats. Let's do it in reverse order for starting with February fourth, which is today. I want to thank W Decker, Lori Elephant, Angel Wings, W Decker, Matthew Bullock. Joseph Syracuse, Florence Tracy, Tom King, missed that one. Thank you very much, Tom. Lindsay May, thank you very much. Thanks for the wonderful show. Thank you for everybody for wonderful guests, a wonderful audience. And it's not just about our guests. It's about our panel. I want to thank W. Decker. Thank you for coming out today. Holy cow. Hey, my pleasure. And thanks, Florence, again for coming on the show. We want to see you again. Absolutely. Uh, I want to thank... uh, Let's see now who else came in next. Larry Gern. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Thomas. It was a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. We had Greg O'Brien. He was in for the earlier part of the show. Greg, if you're out there, thank you, my brother. We appreciate everything you did today. You, you're really a champ. I appreciate that. Also, I want to thank, uh, let's see, you know, uh, uh, Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Thomas. Um, really great show. I, I do want to say you don't have a lot of guests on here but the ones that i've been privy to when you've, you've had them have all been really high quality guests um yeah all credit to you yeah again it's it, it's someone who we ha- the people have not heard a lot a lot about but my god what a great story what a great way to go bring forward on this great show and, and really nice to, to have uh, florence join us yes um, absolutely next, next week yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I also want to thank, uh, let's see, uh, Joseph Syracuse. Thanks for coming in today, buddy. Can you still hear me, Joseph? I think he's frozen. (laughs) All right, Lee, I appreciate you being here today. Thomas, I just want to thank you again. Um, Great job hosting today. And I want to throw some more compliments your way. I think one of the greatest draws and appeals of everything that you do in many different facets on this show is that you know how to shift gears you are a great interviewer yeah. um but at the same time you don't lose that you know like the people's champion kind of interviewer thing um yeah. and that's the draw that we have for you on this show and and i do interrupt sometimes like this right now to try and get in there because usually otherwise someone will go on for a while with a monologue but sometimes i just want to be able to jump in say a couple things to be able to take that point of that conversation and to bring it out versus losing it down the road. Granted, I'm ADHD and or ADD one way or the other. If I, you know, it's kind of like, oh, look, something shiny. If I don't bring it out now, I'll forget about it by the time I'm supposed to cover it. So um, it's just who yeah, I am. I just, but I just wanted to say, you dress up well. You do a great job. You represent our opinions, and you do a great job being a host. And I also appreciate the the free sessions that we do too. Like you cover so many different styles of being able to talk, talk about topics. Um, so good job, thank you, love you for it. Thank you, my brother, I appreciate it. And also I wanna thank everybody who is still in the chat hanging out as the audience fades away. I wanna see who's still out there in the chat right now. We've got four up, Adele and Mark Bromley, uh, Angel Wings, Augustus 816, Cable Guy, David Wartsky. Let me move it forward so I can look forward and not off to the side. Uh, let's see where I'm at. David. Oh, now I can't read. <laughs> David Wartsky, where'd he go? Uh, I'll do it over here where I can read it. <laughs> uh, let's see. No, fiction or fact. Jason Brown, Just Phil, Kelly Burrow, Last of the Finest, Lindsay, and uh, Lindsay May, Matthew Bullock, Peggy uh, with Crockett and Tubbs, Rachel Beal, uh, Razmataz, Shelly Montgomery, uh, who else do we have? Snakes and Doggies, Thor Panchow, W. Decker, and of course, Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. More importantly, thanks to my little mascot here, Cupcake, for being such a good spot tonight. I'm ready to take care of you as you are used to. So on that note, it's great to see that she missed me taking care of her. She kept on coming back to me like, what What next, Dad? What should I do? On that note, as we usually say at the end of every one of our broadcasts, eyes open, no fear, be safe, everyone. Where's it at? Not everybody. No, hold on. Go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Good night, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care. Good night. Okay.